The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Scarlet and gray, maize and blue. Every November, the air cools and the leaves fall and the colors mix on a furious palette for an annual prize. It's a game of legends and legacies, history and hostility. Bow, Woody, Archie, Charles, the big house, the horseshoe, dot the eye, few the victors. It's not just game time. It's time for the game. You're watching the ESPN Rivalry Series, presented by Jiffy Lou. We welcome you to ESPN on ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers, as part of ESPN's Rivalry Series, presented by Jiffy Lou. The 111th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan. Dave Pash alongside Brian Greasy. Brian, you know what it takes to win this game, 3-0, and in your tenure at Michigan against the Buckeyes. So which quarterback is facing more pressure today? Well, I think it's got to be JT Barrett. Everything on the line for Ohio State, a spot in the top four in the college football playoffs still there. And his first time playing in this game as a redshirt freshman, you know the nerves are there. And this Michigan defense, a top 10 defense, will be ready to play. Michigan and Ohio State. A kickoff is coming up from Columbus. ESPN on ABC College Football presented by Kate Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Columbus for Ohio State and Michigan. It is senior day at Ohio Stadium, an emotional day for players and their families, but one of the Buckeyes supposed to be introduced is not here. 22-year-old walk-on, Costa Kara George, a first-year football player, has been missing since Wednesday. Friends, family, members of the university community, along with Columbus police, are part of an ongoing search. Since 1935, Ohio State and Michigan have met on the final Big Ten Saturday of November. The Buckeyes won the toss, elected to defer, so Michigan will receive. Kyle Clinton will kick off to Dennis Norfleet. And the 111th edition of the game is underway. Norfleet on the goal line. And nowhere to go. He is wrapped up and thrown down at the 10. Get out of the field and check in with the third member of our crew. Here's Tom Luganville. Well, guys, in Urban Meyer's words, no nonsense today. Bring your intensity, bring your emotion. It's a rivalry battle. It's war. But we don't need any of that nonsense. In fact, the officials doubling as security guards along the 50-yard line today between Ohio State and Michigan in pregame warm-ups. And watching J.T. Barrett, the Ohio State quarterback, his first contest in this rivalry, thrown it hot, Ryan Green. Let's see if he settles down. There was a fight in the game last year where three players were ejected. Urban Meyer said that's not going to happen from our team this week. We'll see. Devin Gardner, who had 451 yards passing in the game last year, the most ever against Ohio State by a Michigan quarterback. He'll pitch it, and a good run here off the left side. Drake Johnson, a gain of about eight yards before he's brought down by Darren Lee. There's a lot of emotion in the first couple of snaps of this game. And for Devin Gardner, this season has been a nightmare. The only saving grace is in last year's game. He threw for over 450 yards, and they scored 41 points. So Devin Gardner should feel good and confident coming into this game. Despite everything that's happened, I expect him to turn it loose. He was banged up early in the year, starting to run a little bit better. We'll see if that has an impact today as Gardner throws deep and intercepted at the 40-yard line. An easy pick for Von Bell. So on the second play from scrimmage, the Wolverines now minus 14 in the turnover ratio. 
Talk about the nerves early in this game. Second play of the game. Let it roll, guys. He's trying to throw the ball to a check down simple, and then he, he gets off schedule and tries to float the ball over to Darbo. And this has been this has been the Achilles heel of Michigan all season long. 25th turnover of the season. And Ohio State takes over on the Michigan side of the field. Buckeyes lead the country in average starting field position. And JT Barrett, Wichita Falls, Texas, hands it off. Ezekiel Elliott able to power for six yards to the 35. Barrett has accounted for 42 touchdowns this year. That's a school record and tied with Marcus Mariota for the nation's lead. And he didn't even know he'd be quarterback two weeks prior to the start of the regular year before Braxton Miller went down with an injury. And a truly historic season for JT Barrett. You can't say enough about what he has done in filling in for the injured Braxton Miller. And we thought that maybe he would have the nerves, but early on it's been Devin Gardner. Barrett will throw here on second down and wide open is Michael Thomas a first down to the Michigan 25 yard line. They pick up 10. Barrett has been very accurate 65 percent completion rate this year. We had Urban Meyer before the game talking with Tom talking about getting his quarterback into a rhythm. He understands still a redshirt freshman. Give him a couple of quick throws. On the option here's Barrett keeping. He's inside the 20. Well, Barrett has been compared to Alex Smith by Urban Meyer in terms of how he seals, sees the field. He may not be the runner that Braxton Miller is, but we saw him go for 89 yards against Minnesota, a long touchdown run that helped them win that game two weeks ago in a tough environment. He won at Michigan State, won at Penn State, played with a bad knee in double overtime score to give the Buckeyes the win, so he's played in big games, but obviously this is the biggest of his career to date. On second and three, a pass out on the flat and Michigan to the ball. Evan Spencer drop after a gain of maybe a yard to the 18. Well, this Michigan defense, they they know sudden change. They this offense has turned the ball over so many times this season, and despite the bad positions they've been put in, they're still a top 10 defense. Here's Elliott getting the first down inside the five. Elliott stretching for the goal line and out of bounds. Out at the one that'll be first and goal for Ohio State. Ezekiel Elliott is the player on Ohio State's offense that jumps off the tape when I watch. He is a physical player. You see the effort. Looks like he goes out just at the uh, one yard line there, but he will be a factor for Ohio State throughout the course of this game, not just carrying the football, Dave. He also is a factor blocking for, uh, for his quarterback in zone read games and catch the football out of the backfield, a complete play. They go empty here on first down and goal. As you saw in the replay, Elliott definitely short. And there's some movement, a penalty marker here on Ohio State. Ball start, offense number 54. Five-yard penalty, still first down. The Buckeyes have won 23 straight Big Ten regular season games, going back to a loss at Michigan in 2011. That was the game before Urban Meyer was named head coach of the Buckeyes. Devin Gardner was a factor in that game at receiver. He had Denard Robinson in a quarterback. An interception by Gardner to start this game, and now Ohio State looking to capitalize with a touchdown. Barrett dumping it off, and it's a touchdown for Nick Van Ant. The Buckeyes strike first. Perfectly executed play. There was no safety in the middle of the field for Michigan. It was an all-out blitz, and Urban Meyer knew that he had that naked to Vanette and now JT Barrett has set the Big Ten record breaking Drew Brees' record for touchdowns responsible in one season. Quite a historic season for JT Barrett. Didn't start well. Three interceptions week two against Virginia Tech back on September 6th but the Buckeyes have won nine straight and off to a great start today taking an interception by Devin Gardner. The 15th pick that Gardner's thrown this year. 
and turning it in the points. Barrett to Van Eck, seven nothing Buckeyes. Welcome back to ESPN and ABC College Football, presented by Kay Jewelers, part of ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lube. Bob Bell with his fourth interception of the season. And Ohio State turns it into a touchdown. The Buckeyes lead 7-0. These teams have met 97 consecutive years. The last win in Columbus for Michigan back in 2000. Ohio State has won 9 of the last 10, 11 of the last 13, going back to that game in 2000. But we've seen it, and Brian, you've been a part of it, where unranked teams have knocked off ranked Ohio State squads before in this rivalry. Obviously, though, turnovers are going to play a big role. If Michigan is going to get some takeaways, they can't give it away themselves as Northfleet is hit at the 20-yard line and dropped. Curtis Samuel made the tackle. This is during uh, the break where Brady Hope, the head coach of Michigan, who could be coaching his final game if the Wolverines don't win. They need a victory to be bowl eligible. Hope in his fourth season. And, and those two tied together at the hip. And the way that Devin Gardner has played, the way that uh, Brady Hope has coached, certainly this team... Uh, needs to get something going early in this game to get any kind of confidence. Gardner trying to set up the screen. Ohio State all over it as Curtis Grant drops Justice Hayes for a loss of four on the play. Great recognition by Grant, the senior. Right here, he's going to read screen. They've got blockers. Kayla, 67, gets out, but doesn't have his head on a swivel. Jack Miller, the center, not able to get to Curtis Grant, and that feels good as a senior to make that kind of play early in the game. The Ohio State defense improved this year. Meanwhile, Michigan's offense, 111th in scoring, nationally 114th in yards. Gonna be a run play here to Johnson, a big ball, and Johnson has the first down to the 31. That's a 15-yard run for the sophomore from Ann Arbor. And this is what Michigan needs to do. Take the football out of Devin Gardner's hands. Let this roll, guys. You can see on the inside. Let him run the ball in between the tackles. Protect the football. Get Drake Johnson and Priest downhill running physical approach. They ran for almost 300 yards last week in a loss at home against Maryland. Fresh set of downs here for Gardner and company. Ohio State coming after Gardner. He's in trouble. And Gardner is sacked at the 20-yard line. Adolphus Washington was there first for Ohio State. Seniors making plays. Now it's Adolphus Washington, the junior. He just beats Kyle Kalis right here. This has been an Achilles heel for Michigan. You got to keep your head up, move your feet. Adolphus Washington and Michael Bennett, those two defensive tackles for Ohio State have created problems for offenses all year. And as soon as you try to double team those guys, Dave, that's when you single up Joey Bosa. They're a potent defensive line. Yeah, Bosa might be the best defensive player in the Big Ten, finalist for a lot of conference and national awards. He was back there as well. They're second and 20, and they're going to run Northleaf. And he's wrapped up at the 24th. A three-yard pickup, Josh Perry, leading tackler for the Buckeyes. At 100 now in the season, he made the hit. And really the problem for Michigan is they haven't been able to hang their hat on any one thing. Throwing the football, run the football. Derek Green got hurt earlier in the year. Devin Funches has had problems catching the football. So it, it, where do you turn if your offensive coordinator, Doug Nussmeyer, it's been very difficult. The quarterback has lost confidence. There's Nussmeyer, and now backed up in your own end, third and 15. There's not a lot, whole lot of plays in the playbook. And we'll see if the Buckeyes come after Gardner. They blitzed him on first down and got under the ground. And Gardner in trouble again and sacked. Untouched was Darren Lee. Gardner sacked twice on that series, and the Wolverines have to punt. Trying to set up a screen. Here's Justice Hayes right here. He needs to block Dylan Lee off the edge and then release, but 
Goes inside, nobody blocks Lee, and, and that's just too easy. And it's the little things, the, the accountability and the little things that Michigan all season has failed to do on a consistent enough basis. Well, Hoglup punting from his five-yard line, and Jalen Marshall, who scored four consecutive touchdowns, he muffed it and scooped it up. And Marshall is loose inside the 40, bouncing off of tacklers and finally brought down. He won the Indiana game single-handedly last week. There's a penalty marker at the 21. And a 24-yard return for Marshall, the freshman, as a high school quarterback. He's getting more work with an injury to Dontre Wilson, who broke a bone in his foot in the victory in East Lansing a few weeks ago. During the return, only the 34 in the return team. 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. And it's still going to give Ohio State possession in Michigan territory for the second time already. Buckeyes ball when we come back with a 7-0 lead midway through the first. ESPN College Football, presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Chevrolet, find new roads. And Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Video of one of the biggest upsets in the series back in 1993. Unbeaten Michigan wins in Columbus against fifth-ranked Ohio State 28-0. Mercury Hayes caught that ball. It was a true freshman on the sideline. Mercury Hayes caught that ball over his shoulder, kind of like Willie Mays. So many great players have made so many great plays in this rivalry through the years. And Ohio State starting in Michigan territory for the second straight possession from the Michigan 41. Already a touchdown pass for Barrett today, 34th on the season. He is the school record holder for most touchdown passes in a single year. Breaking Troy Smith's mark. Here's Elliott picking a hole. Down at the 35, a gain of six. Taylor on the stop. Well, you talked at the top about the pressure that Barrett's facing. He's handled it well so far. Well, certainly when you get a turnover early and now the second possession in plus territory, you take all the nerves away from a, a redshirt freshman quarterback. Michigan has handed this early to him on a platter, and we knew that he had ice water in his veins, and he's proven it so far. They'll keep it on the ground here with Elliott. First down and more inside the 30. Gain of close to nine. Well, guys, it also helps when you're having tremendous first down success. You're never behind the chains. You put a young quarterback in an environment where he always has a chance to succeed because you're not having to dig deep into the playbook. What I've been impressed with is his confidence, his body language. The game isn't too big for him. And most importantly, from a play calling standpoint, they're just dinking and dunking and allowing him to gain confidence early. First down inside the 30, Tom. And Barrett off play action. In trouble. And throws it away. You know, it's amazing. I, I, I think this is one of the biggest stories in college football. He, he, Braxton Miller was going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate, the reigning Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Barrett was the number three guy. There's Braxton, who's uh, in attendance today. And Barrett finds out after Miller is injured that uh, how he's going to be the starter. And after struggling the first two games, he's been lighting it up of late. Yeah, he only had 12 days to prepare for the first game, 19 days to prepare for that Virginia Tech game. It's not a surprise he was a little overmatched, but every week he's gotten better this season. On second and long, nowhere for Elliott to go. You talked about Michigan having a good defense. They fly to the ball there you know, on a loss of five. Guys, you know, JT Barrett was a player out of the state of Texas in the same class as Tyrone Swoops at Texas. JT Barrett takes his official visit in Columbus during the game, and he said he would have gone to Texas. Even Tyrone Swoops, even though he was there, he would have gone to Texas anyway. And now you look at these two programs, Texas, Ohio State, and look at what's happening at the quarterback position here for the Buckeyes. What a choice and what a destination. See what he can do here, Tom. Third down and 15. Barrett with time. And a long throw that's incomplete. Try to hit Michael Thomas. So now it's fourth and 15. It would be about a 49-yard field goal try from here. 
And they got a true freshman kicker in Sean Nurnberger. We'll see what Coach Meyer elects to do. <laughs> He's not happy. He knew that uh, if you could just complete that pass, even if you don't get a first down, at least you get enough yardage to attempt a field goal. And uh, just an errant pass, an errant throw from JT Bear. He had three or four of those in the game last week against Indiana when we talked with Urban Meyer. Uh, this week uh, in prep for this game he said you know if you hit those plays that game would have been over long before and uh, first thing inaccurate throw from JT Barrett and the question here is is it worth the risk as uh, they're going to take a penalty here for delay and just punt the ball I think Urban have already wait, wait. made up his mind to uh, punt Five the football penalty. Still fourth down. and with the way Michigan's offense has struggled this year makes sense rather than risk a missed field goal and give the Wolverines the ball at the 40-yard line. So Cameron Johnston will punt it here, and North lead is deep for Michigan. A stop, though, by the Wolverines after Ohio State started in Michigan territory at the 41. And not what... The Buckeye coaching staff had in mind. The Wolverines will take it, a touchback. Michigan will be back on offense. Trailing 7-0. The Buckeyes and the Wolverines, the 111th meeting and one of the great rivalries in sports. Tonight on ABC, the historic Civil War rivalry between number two Oregon and Oregon State. That's at 8 Eastern on ABC. Game that obviously has playoff implications, as does this game with Ohio State sixth in the latest college football playoff rankings. Buckeyes hoping to move up with a uh, win today and then also next week in the Big Ten title game where they will play the winner of Minnesota, Wisconsin. That game is on later this afternoon. Michigan takes over, first down on its 20, and a quick throw into the flat to Devin Funchess, and he's out to the 25 for a gain of five yards. I think Michigan needs to get Devin Gardner running. I think you see Brady Hope there talking with Doug Nussmeyer. Might be saying, hey, look, let's get let's get some running plays for Devin, maybe some zone read stuff. We've got to take some pressure off our passing game. We're having trouble protecting and trouble throwing the football. It's been that way all year. Get Devin Gardner doing what he does best, and that's run the football. Two sacks on Gardner so far, and a good pickup on first down. Play fake here for Gardner. And hits Funches again. It's a first down Michigan at the 32. When it comes to the passing game, Greece, that's exactly what they've got to do with Devin Gardner. We've seen the results of him trying to throw from within the pocket. He's a run-pass threat. You get him on the perimeter, you put the defense in a dilemma. Do we come up and do we play him in the run or do we fit defend coverage? He's healthy. Allow him to be that perimeter weapon in the passing game. And as you said, run the football in the early downs between the tackles. Yeah, 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 82 yards a week ago, Lugs, in the loss against Maryland. Really, their only chance to do anything offensively is for him to run the football. Here's Johnson straight ahead, and this time he's wrapped up at the point of attack. They had success in their opening series, pounding in between the tackles. Michael Bennett, senior, made the stop for Ohio State, so it's second down and long for Michigan. And this is an Ohio State defense that I know has concerned Urban Meyer a little bit late here in the season. Last three weeks they've given up over 675 yards on the ground to three teams of Michigan State, Minnesota, and Indiana. So they've got some things they want to show up in the front seven. They spread it out here. Go empty for Gardner. Second down and nine. And Gardner going to take off. And Gardner hit at the 40. He'll be stopped short of the first down. He mentioned the 82 rushing yards last week. That was a season high. And it also, it also gets him involved in the game where he doesn't have to read the defense, doesn't have to try to fit a throw in, but just get the nerves out of Devin Gardner here early in the game. Third and short here. Expect them to come off the football and run the ball. They have a fullback, Joe Carriage in. Third down for Michigan. Inside four minutes to go. And it's Carriage, the up man, getting the handoff and able to power past the marker for a first down. Raquan McMillan on the tackle. 
And that's a big first down for Michigan. Things have gone sour for them early in this game with a turnover. They get the stop on defense and then they get a couple of first downs here on their third drive and nearing midfield. That was only the second carry this year for Joe Carriage. Gardner with an interception on the second play. Ohio State turned that into points. Gardner's settled down a bit since. And Gardner has a ton of time looking deep. Single coverage going for Fungus. And it's caught inside the 15. Big play for Michigan, 43 yards. You have any success run the football, then you come with the play action. It's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. Doran Grant, the corner on Devin Funches and the size advantage, just throw the ball up, play basketball, go up and get a rebound, and two guys struggling with confidence. Devin Gardner and Devin Funches both come up and make a play. Three catches already for Funches in this game, 58 on the season. And Michigan is in the red zone. Gardner in trouble. Fires complete for the touchdown. Wide open is Jake Butt. As Gardner throws his first road touchdown pass this season. And give credit. Brady Hope. Doug Nussmeyer on the sideline. A little adjustment, get number 98 involved in the game, running the football, and then a couple of play actions over the top and a very well-designed play gets Jake Butt wide open in the end zone. Matt Weil on a tie for the Wolverines. So Devin Gardner bouncing back from that opening possession interception leads his team down the field. A long pass to Funchess and then this touchdown toss to Jake Butt to tie things up at seven here late in the first quarter. Later today on ESPN, it's Florida State. Ranked third in the college football playoff rankings, taking on its rival, the Florida Gators. 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. Devin Gardner on that last drive, 4 of 4, 69 yards. The big pass to Funches, and then the touchdown to Butt. And now a touchback. Ohio State will start on the 25. We talked about very creative design. Once you get in the red zone, it's called a switch release. One guy goes first, and here's Jake Butt. He's going to come around, and then he's going to get into the seam. A little bit of miscommunication from Ohio State on the defensive end. And an accurate throw nets a touchdown for Devin Gardner. Under pressure. He's going to be under pressure. He's familiar with that. You see Von Bell about a fingertip away from getting that football tie ball game. JT Barrett back to work first down at the Ohio State 25. And Barrett's pass is wide of the intended target, Michael Thomas. How big was that punt? You saw how upset Urban Meyer was with Cameron Johnston as Ohio State took the penalty to try to pin Michigan deep. Instead, it's a horrible kick, goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, it's huge because you would, you would assume if Michigan were backed up inside the five-yard line, they'd be very conservative in their play call. As it stood, they were more aggressive because they had a little bit of field position. Barrett, three of six passing. Elliott with a big hole. He's across the 30. He'll come up short for the first down, but still it's a seven-yard pickup. James Ross on the tackle. So third down here for Ohio State. And Johnston got an earful from the coaching staff after that kick. Michigan took it right down the field and tied the game at seven. Late here in the first quarter. Michigan trying to get bowl eligible. Ohio State looking to get to 11 and one and eight and zero. Finish off another perfect Big Ten campaign under Coach Meyer. Here's Barrett going to keep and he is drilled, but able to bounce off of the tackle and get the first down. 
Joe Bolden made the initial hit, but Barrett is powerful, 225 pounds. Well, we talk about how smart JT Barrett is. We talk about how accurate he is throwing the football and then making good decisions. But look at the effort there. I mean, that's that's true leadership. We saw a little bit of that in the Penn State game in overtime, right? It come down from two touchdowns, and JT Barrett sprains an MCL in overtime, has two physical runs to get in the end zone. I really think that was the turning point of the season for Ohio State, and specifically JT Barrett and his leadership of this team. Barrett to the air here on first down in trouble. Barrett taking off, and Barrett gets hammered at the 43-yard line by Jake Ryan, a Westlake, Ohio native, about two hours north of Columbus, leading tackler for Michigan. And Ryan's been the heart and soul of this Michigan defense for quite some time. He's been an emotional leader. We were talking with Greg Madison, their defensive coordinator, who's a very emotional coach. He says it's going to be very hard to coach this defense. Last game potentially for Jake Ryan. Finals for the Butkus Award. Very lightly recruited. Brady Hope said he didn't recruit him at San Diego State. And here's Elliott in trouble, and he is slammed down for a loss at the 41-yard line by Joe Bolden, coming off a 14-tackle effort against Maryland a week ago. They bring a weak side pressure. Here's Ryan and Bolden, both coming on the weak side to the field. A perfectly executed blitz. Great call from Greg Madison, who's one of the best defensive coordinators in all of college football. He knows you can't blitz on a consistent basis. It's too much. It's too easy to read. So he's going to mix in pressures, mix in some zones and man-to-man -man coverage. Michigan with some momentum could be even more so the Wolverines stop Ohio State on third down and five Buckeyes have been excellent on third down and Urban Meyer is going to have to call a timeout only one on the play clock so two remaining for the Buckeyes and an important third down when we come back. Third down and five for Ohio State. I mean, this is where Ohio State has been the best in college football, third downs all season long. And a big reason why is because they can throw the ball for a first down or they can run it with Zeke Elliott and JT Barrett. It's been very hard to stop them with that balance. Four seconds remaining in the quarter. And Barrett to throw, looking for Marshall, who's covered. Barrett taking off, and Ryan takes him down. Did he rule him down, or did he say he got rid of the ball for a forward pass? No signal yet by the official. Potential grounding, number three was in the vicinity. Fourth down. But they do rule that it was a forward pass, so it'll be fourth and five. Ohio State will have to punt when we start the second quarter. Michigan able to hold on third down once again. ESPN and ABC College Football presented by Kay Jewelers will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 2006 Heisman Trophy winner and Buckeye great Troy Smith honored and enshrined in between quarters 3-0 in the game in his history here in Columbus. Yeah, you think this game matters? If Troy Smith's not 3-0 against Michigan, I guarantee his name's not in the rafters. What a great career Troy Smith had. The thing I remember about him, not only was he a smart player, but he could throw it, he could run it, much like J.T. Barrett. Uh, the, the balance that he had playing the football game was, was a lot of fun to watch. Cameron Johnston, last time we saw him, he was getting chewed out by the Buckeye coaching staff. And trying to pin Michigan deep here. Northfleet will let it go. And the Buckeyes will down this one at the five-yard line. I think the reception for Johnson on the sideline will be a little bit different this time. <laughs> Let's check in with Tom down on the field. Well, guys, this defense for Michigan, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of smiles on their faces. I don't think I can put into words the gravity of what not going three and out can do for your defense. Grease, you've referenced this is the top 10 defense. As much as they've been on the field this year, to be able to sustain a drive offensively, get some enthusiasm going, deal with the ebbs and flows of this first quarter that started out horrendous on offense, it's the defense that gets rested and gets you back the football. What a difference it makes to sustain. Stay in a drive. 
And to piggyback on that, Lugs, this situation for Michigan on the offensive side, just don't turn the football over. Don't put your defense in a bad situation, and you may have a chance. First down at the Wolverine five-yard line. After that great punt, here's Johnson, finds a hole. Out past the 10. Von Bell on the stop. Johnson last week rushed for 94 yards against Maryland. Game against Indiana had 122 yards coming off at ACL a year ago. Getting a lot of work here in the first half. And maybe the one positive that's come out of the last month of the season for Michigan has been they've been able to start running the football a little bit better. This offensive line has come together a little bit in the running game. Still struggling in pass pro. But if you can run the football and play good defense, you have a chance. Second and four. They'll keep it on the ground with Johnson. Got carriage out there. Springing into the 20. Great block by the fullback. And it's a gain of 12 or 13. Joe Carriage, one of the more underrated players of this Michigan team. Take a look, number 36 on the outside gets a block. Takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback when you can run the ball on first and second down. 43 yards already for Johnson on five carries. Michigan with more yards than Ohio State as Gardner looks deep, had protection and going for Funchess. Another catch made by Funchess, a first down at the 40-yard line. Gardner starting to get it going now. Well, he's, he's getting a little confidence. This wasn't the uh, most forceful throw. This ball kind of labored out there. Ball's behind Funches. He does a nice job of coming back and getting that ball. That's That's been kind of the M.O. for, for Devin Gardner. It's been inaccurate, and Funches has had to make a lot of acrobatic catches this season. And, and Doug Nussmeyer was telling us to start to get into his head a little bit, and that's why he started dropping some footballs. But you see Devin Gardner getting six for six. Another first down. Here's Funches juggling, now securing, and wrapped up at the 46-yard line. Let's check in with Robert Flores in the studio. All right, guys, AT&T inside the headset. Kentucky and Louisville are playing for the Governor's Cup. This is Kentucky Stanley Williams putting the Wildcats, extending their lead. If the Wildcats win, they're bowl eligible. They're leading 13-0 against Louisville. Robert here at 7-7, and Michigan, after starting this drive on its five-yard line, is out near midfield. Devin Gardner now 7 of 8 passing, seven straight completions after the pick. Here's Johnson, grabbed from behind by Adolphus Washington, and tackled short of the first down. So third down and about three here for the Wolverines. Yeah, we haven't called uh, Joey Bosa's name yet in this game. He's the real game changer on that defensive line for Ohio State. Going up against Mason Cole, left uh, tackle for Michigan, who's a true freshman, very talented player, but doesn't have the size or strength of a normal left tackle. And somebody that uh, I know Ohio State's defensive coordinator, Chris Ash and Luke Fickle, thought they could take advantage of. Third down and two. Play action. Gardner has a completion and a first down, and Carriage is carrying defenders with him inside the 45. Joe Carriage makes two big plays on this drive to get Michigan out of the shadow of its own goal line. Running play, and then makes this adjustment to the ball throw a little bit behind him. Big first down for Michigan. And eight straight completions now for Gardner. Carriage has maybe been the MVP so far of this first half for Michigan. Picked up that third down and one on that previous drive that eventually led to a touchdown. The fullback position is not dead. <laughs> Still alive, at least in Ann Arbor. First down at the Ohio State 42. Here comes a play fake. And Gardner in trouble. Hit. And the arm was going forward. It's an incompletion. Joey Bosa got pressure. Bosa Adolphus. leading the Big Ten in sacks and tackles for a loss. Sorry, Dave. Adolphus Washington is, is just getting off the football on Kyle Kalis. The ball coming forward. Bosa's there as well, but Adolphus Washington gets there, gets there first. And if Michigan's going to throw the ball, first down is a down to throw it. You don't think that that defensive line is just going to be pass rushing, but Michigan has been unable to slow down any of these four guys 
on a consistent basis. Plus, they're running between the tackles, so you can be three-dimensional. you got to respect play action. you got to respect Gardner running the football as well. He's to the 36 here, a gain of six before Perry brings him down. And they're in third and manageable. That wasn't the case on now, the first couple possessions, but third down at about four here. Right, you understand the, the situation, and Doug Nussmeyer there wants to get gets across the 50-yard line and wants to take a shot downfield, right? And that's a lot, like a lot of offensive coordinators in college football. Thankfully, you know, you get rid of the football, it's a, and it's an incomplete pass, and you can still manage to get in a third down situation where you can have the option of running pass. Keep in mind their field goal kicker Matt Wild is a senior. His career long is 52. This would be about the three-yard try if Michigan can't move it here. Out of an empty set on third down and four. And a timeout with three on the play clock. Brady Hope calls Michigan's first timeout of the half. Wolverines trying to get bowl eligible. And they're tied with Ohio State and on the move, but a big third down. Tonight on ESPN, it's a rematch of one of the great finishes in college football history. Remember the kick six last year, Auburn knocking off Alabama. The Iron Bowl tonight, 745 Eastern College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville in Columbus, Michigan, and Ohio State tied at seven. Things look bleak early for the Wolverines after an interception, a quick score, five minutes into the game by Ohio State. Michigan responded, though, with a nice touchdown drive, and now the Wolverines on the move. Can they pick up third and four? But bring Norfleet into the backfield. Here's a blitz. Gardner dumps it off to Norfleet. And it's a beautiful call. Norfleet hurdling teammates and Buckeyes to get the first down inside the 30. They Mason take it. called the true freshman tackle out there blocking. Sorry, Dave. They take advantage of the best player for Ohio State, Joey Bosa. Take a look. They don't even block him. They just said, you rush the passer and we'll dump it out. And then they release Mason Cole downfield. Passes behind the line of scrimmage. Very well designed. And probably when you call that timeout, you get a chance to call that play on the sideline. First down inside the Buckeye 30. Johnson met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. True freshman Raquan McMillan is going to be a good one. He's out of Georgia. He made the tackle for a loss there. And they will play McMillan probably half of the snaps. He will split it 50-50 with Curtis Grant. Even though Curtis Grant has played solid this year as a senior, Raquan McMillan has the kind of talent that you cannot keep on the sideline. Even as a true freshman, he is going to be an outstanding player for Ohio State for a long time. Loss of two. Michigan with twice as many yards total offense as Ohio State so far in the game. Gardner inside the 25, breaks a tackle, and inside the 15-yard line for another Michigan first down. Well, it looks like a totally different player than we've seen this year and also on that first series. And the backup tight end, Heitzman, number 92, comes out, gets a nice block on Perry there. And this is what he does best, Dave. Get him outside of the pocket, let him use his athletic ability. People forget sometimes that he was a wide receiver. He has the moves and the speed once he gets out of the pocket to make guys miss. And you think of all the great quarterbacks in Michigan, including yourself and Devin Gardner, as the top two passing games in Michigan history, including 451 against Ohio State, 503 against Indiana a year ago. Here's Johnson. He's smothered at the line of scrimmage by Steve Miller. One of the seniors honored today, final home game as a Buckeye. Ohio State definitely will have a game next week. Playing in the Big Ten Championship, and obviously the college football playoff committee keeping an eye on this game. And that's Luke Fickle, a defensive coordinator. This drive is exactly what Ohio State coming into this game wanted to make Michigan do. They didn't think that Michigan could go 90 yards on a drive without making some kind of mistake or turnover. But now this is the 13th play of this drive, and Michigan continues not to make that error. They've had the ball for six and a half minutes on this possession. Gardner to the air on second down and nine. Feeling a little pressure and threw it over the head of Amara Darbo. Third down and nine. Amara 
They are three of four on third down, but asking a lot here. Well, and I think Doug Nussmeyer knows that you've got three points in your pocket here. You want to call something that's safe. Don't make Devin Gardner try to read the entire field and force the ball downfield to try to get a first down here. Call something that if it opens up, you take a shot in the end zone. If it's not there, you dump the ball down in a safe fashion and kick the field goal. The other thing this drive is doing is we have a timeout is keeping that potent Ohio State offense on the sideline. Michigan dominating time of possession and looking to take the lead here midway through the second quarter. ESPN College Football presented by K Jewelers brought to you by Taco Bell. The new way to Taco Bell is here only in the app. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes on digital HD today. And Jiffy Lube. Keep your car in shape and stop by Jiffy Lube today for a signature service oil change and leave worry behind. Now we keep showing these upsets, and I think uh, Buckeye fans are getting a little nervous about today. That's the 1995 victory against number two Ohio State. <laughs> Buckeyes have. I'll let everybody know I didn't pick those highlights. <laughs> but you were part of that game and the 1996 upset here in Columbus, and of course the 97 national championship season. Ohio State, though, has dominated the last 10 years, winning nine. Michigan, though, can take the lead. Third down and nine here for the Wolverines at the 12 yard line. They would love to get the ball to Devin Funches top of the screen. Gardner steps up and runs and he's outside to the five. Gardner hit and out of bounds and he was close to the first down. And they will spot him at the two. It'll be first and goal for Michigan. Great equalizer of the mobile quarterback. This was a designed pass and Devin Gardner just decides to tuck it and run and then extends Great athletic ability. We've seen him do that throughout his career around the goal line. Use his athletic ability to extend the football. You could argue this is the best drive all year for Michigan. It started on the five. No question. With the circumstances on the road against this team, there is no question about that. Here's Johnson powering to the goal line. And in. Touchdown, Michigan. And the Wolverines take the lead. A 15 play, 95 yard drive that took over seven minutes off the clock. And it's just power by Drake Johnson. He gets stopped by Michael Bennett there, 63. And he just keeps pumping his legs. Tyvis Powell had a chance. And that final effort gets him into the end zone. Longest drive of the season by Michigan. Drake Johnson with his third rushing touchdown. The worst start you could possibly have for the Wolverines, but what a response on the road in what could be Brady Hoke's final game as head coach. They have a 14-7 lead. And you stumble out of the gates on the road in Columbus with an early interception. You either roll up your fist or you lay down. Michigan deciding to fight. We should be surprised by nothing in this rivalry. Even a 95-yard touchdown drive by Michigan. Video of that score posted now on the Sports Center app. 15 plays, 95 yards. You look at the ball control. Michigan dominating time of possession. Ohio State cold figuratively and literally on that sideline for about seven minutes. And now they'll have to drive the length of the field. Their first two possessions started in Michigan territory. They scored on the first one, but then had to punt on the second one. And it'll be a touchback. It will come out to the 25 for the Buckeyes. Time now for today's Aflac trivia question. And meanwhile, some pushing and shoving. A penalty flag came into the five. The uh, Aflac trivia question, who holds the single-game rushing record in the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry? I'm guessing, Brian, you know the answer. <laughs> So offsetting personal fouls, uh, a lot of talk this week here in Columbus when it was made known 
to the players by Coach Urban Meyer that if any Ohio State Buckeye threw a punch, he would be dismissed from the team. And you see Worley getting into it for Ohio State, along with Sione Homa. And offsetting fouls, Ohio State ball in the 25. No punches thrown. Have three players ejected after a fight in the game last year in Ann Arbor. And Elliott not much off the right side. Again, at the point of attack, that front seven for Michigan pretty good. You had Taco Charlton in there for the Wolverines along with Ryan. Well, and, and Ohio State needs to get some offense going here. That, like we, as we said, they've been on the sideline. You come out here, and if you go three and out and put your defense back on the field, it would not be a good thing. They need to get some rhythm. Elliott trying to get the corner across the 30-yard line. He'll come up short of the first down. Lost his helmet, so he's got to come out for a play. We haven't really seen Jalen Marshall involved in the offense much. He really won the game for him last week at home against Indiana with four straight touchdowns. He's an electrifying player, one of the fastest players on the field. And with Ezekiel Elliott out in this situation, that's a big factor here. He is their sledgehammer in between the tackles on third and short. You would expect him to get the ball, but Curtis Samuel, the true freshman at 195 pounds in the game. 51 attempts on the year for Samuel, third down and one. And hit is Samuel for a loss. Michigan all over that. It's Jake Ryan for the Wolverines, and it's fourth down. Jake Ryan fires through the A-gap. You see him, he's right here in the middle of, middle of the field. He reads it perfectly. Nobody blocks him. Something mis a, a miscommunication up front by Ohio State on the offensive line. Best player for Michigan, the Mike linebacker on third and short. You might want to block him. We saw this last week against Indiana. Ohio State had trouble running the football, short yardage situations. They've got a punt again here, third straight punt. Northley signaling. And a fair catch made around the 28-yard line. Well, Michigan's defense, top 10 in several categories. And the Wolverines stepping up today. A three and out by Ohio State. All the momentum favoring the road team. Trying to pull the upset. Hey, Pat, Brian, Gracie, Tom, Lugan, Bill. Going to answer the AFLAC trivia question. The world's the single game rushing record in the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry. You handed it off to him, so you might as well tell us who the answer is. Timmy, the Timmy B, Tamunga B, Akapatuka. And what's funny during that game, the uh, announcers, you know, you play-by-play -play guys, yeah. they were calling him Tish, Tishmunga. I hope <laughs> you it would never have done that, would you? I hope it wasn't Bob Greasy that was doing that. <laughs> it was the radio. Okay. All right. <laughs> Look at Michigan, the last two drives, 175 yards. The Wolverines with a 14-7 lead, trying to end Ohio State's hopes of getting in the college football playoff. Here's Drake Johnson. Cuts it back, and he gets pulverized by Steve Miller. Body slammed at the 32-yard line. Gain of three, but, man, Johnson paid for it. The intensity of this rivalry. Take a look, real speed. You talk to any offensive or defensive lineman that's played in this rivalry, and they will tell you it is the most physical game by far of the year, and Steve Miller knew that coming in. Well, Ohio State needed something like that. See if that turns the tie a little bit. Gardner getting outside the pocket and dumping it off. A beautiful play to Justice Hayes for the first down. Out to the 44 for 12 yards. Taking advantage of Joey Bosa. They're putting him in no man's land. If you can't block him, then just try to fool him. And so far, using the athletic ability of Devin Gardner, you can see Joey Bosa kind of frustrated. You get into a great player's head like that, and he wants to make a play on every single snap, and when he gets unblocked, he feels like he's going to make that play. He's got to settle down, keep his keys, and he will affect this game at some point. 
Defense for Ohio State has been on the field for 16 minutes. Play fake for Gardner. And going to the sideline. Excellent throw and catch inside the 45 by Jake Buck. Boy, Gardner took a shot as well. Michael Bennett with pressure. You mentioned a great throw and catch Jake Butt, one of the most talented players on this Michigan team, clearly gets that left foot in. And you mentioned it, under pressure. I think Devin Gardner knows in this game he's going to have to throw for under pressure. Michael Bennett, you can't block him with the, the talent that Michigan has at guard and the center. They're not going to be able to block consistently Adolphus Washington and Michael Bennett, so Devin Gardner is going to have to make those incredible plays. Into Ohio State territory, nearing four minutes to go here in the half. A pitch to Johnson on first down. Looking for the cutback. Penalty flag down. Johnson tackled at the 41 by Bennett. So holding against Michigan. How much of what we're seeing from Devin Gardner today is confidence from previous games pa uh, pass played against Ohio State and the success that he had in those games? Start by the wide receiver with the hold. Well, I think I think Devin Gardner understands and he knows. Look, this might be my last chance to play football for Michigan, and and this is all I have left. And the season hasn't gone the way I wanted it. And certainly, the, the prior games that he has played against Ohio State factor into that. And knowing that, listen, if I go out and play my game and I be aggressive and I trust my eyes and I let it rip, good things might happen. But more impressive is the way he responded after that first pass, which is as ugly as it gets. He's been 10 of 13 since that pick and a throw here on first down and 20 and wide open in the middle of the field Darbo and it's ruled incomplete he trapped it at the 41 yard line in Ohio State territory Darbo saying it was a catch is good let's see well, Darbo was wide open the ball is thrown low looks like Get another look at it here. Oh, that came the out there. To the ground. He, yep. he cupped it. He had his hands underneath it, but when he rolled over, that ball definitely touched the, touched the grass. So it's second down and 20. At the Michigan 46. Play clock at one. Another pass play. Gardner in trouble. Level the sack by Bennett. Michigan going backwards on this drive. That's the third sack for Ohio State. Bosa with pressure as well for the Buckeyes. Well, here's Michael Bennett, here's Joey Bosa. When they decide to run a stunt in a passing situation, they are almost impossible to block. Bosa with the quickness. And the left tackle, left guard combination for Michigan overmatched. They'll keep it on the ground here, play it safe with Justice Hayes. And he's to the 45-yard line before Perry makes the tackle. So Ohio State will get the ball back with about two minutes to go and two timeouts left, trailing Michigan by seven. And all year, the strength of this Ohio State team has been this offense and JT Barrett and all the weapons, and they've scored a ton of points. In this game, they needed to turn the momentum, and it was their defense here getting a stop to give their offense a chance before halftime to get this, this game tied. Auger up, good punter. And a kick it deep to Marshall, who's only had his hands on the ball once, and that was on a punt return, and he muffed it. That one hit out of bounds inside the 20. It'll be marked right at the 17-yard line. 2.15 on the clock. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, John Saunders and company get you caught up on all today's college football action. All the games impacting the college football playoff including this one here. Urban Meyer has not lost a regular season game in the Big Ten. They've won 23 in a row since the 2011 game in Ann Arbor when Michigan won it in Brady Hook's first year. Wolverines won 11 games that season. But Meyer 2-0 as head coach against Michigan, but trailing here by seven late in the second quarter. Barrett off a play fake. Everybody covered. And Barrett's pass incomplete. Intended for Devin Smith, Brennan Byer with pressure for Michigan. 
Now, since that first drive, this Ohio State offense has been rattled. They've had eight of uh, 14 plays go for zero or negative yardage since that first drive. And you start this drive with an incomplete pass, and JT Barrett's got to find something positive. Barrett, three of eight passing. And a design quarterback run. Barrett powers for the first down. Took a couple of hits. Able to get the necessary yardage to move the chains. 2.03 on the clock. Great call there from Tom Herman, offensive coordinator, realizing he needs to settle things down. Call one of their bread and butter plays, which is that quarterback misdirection counter to safe call. You spread them out, and JT Barrett executes it well. Penalty marker down. And again, everybody covered downfield. Another flag is thrown. And Barrett gets popped by Ryan. Glasgow also in on the tackle at the 30. Probably a holding call. And might have been an offside or a motion penalty on Ohio State. Barrett's had all day to throw the football. It's just that the coverage downfield has been so good. He hasn't had anywhere to throw the football. There were two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, face mask, face mask. Offense number 50. 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That's on center, Jacoby Bourne. And so now Ohio State will be backed up. And Barrett has missed his last five attempts throwing the football as well. There it is, Barrett grabbing. The face mask of Matthew Godin, easy call for the official. Now the Buckeyes have been here before. They've had tight games here the last month, including the victory in East Lansing. Last week here at home, they trailed. And in the second half against Indiana, came back to win. A little shovel pass here to Corey Smith, and he has stood up at the 20-yard line. A game of about six there. At some point, J.T. Barrett's going to need to throw the ball down the field and be effective doing it. You've got playmakers, Devin Smith, Michael Thomas, Jalen Marsh. you got to get the football in the hands of your playmakers in space. That's the premise of this offense. They need to start doing that. And Barrett's pass pulled in, and breaking a tackle is Michael Thomas. Uh, they get about 14 on second and 18. Third and three or four here inside a minute to go in the half. Taylor whiffed on the tackle attempt, and then Delano Hill eventually got Michael Thomas to the ground. And you're getting a run on offense. Go to your go-to to go -to players. Leading receiver, Michael Thomas, throwing the football. Doesn't matter if it's man-to-man -man coverage or if it's tight. You trust that he's going to make a play, and he comes up big for JT Barrett there. Two timeouts remaining for Ohio State. Third down and two. Empty set here. And now you see Elliott, Barrett faking it to him, and going to take off, breaks a tackle, gets the first down, stays in bounds before he's run out at the 49 by Charlton. That's why JT Barrett is a Heisman Trophy candidate with plays like that. Well, an athletic, but look at the decision. If he throws that swing pass, it'd be tipped and incomplete or intercepted. So the decisions that JT Barrett has been making this season on a consistent basis have been so good, and that's why Urban Meyer and Tom Herman have been so pleased with the play of JT Barrett. That's your freshman, 12th start. Yeah, get some points here, though, if you're Ohio State. 50 seconds left in the half. You got two timeouts. And Barrett to the air. And got a man coming open and making the catch is Corey Smith. He came in with only 12 grabs all year. He's made a couple of big catches on this possession. Ohio State trying to get up to the line here. And definitely a catch. The officials are going to stop it, though, and take a look. That ruling is under further review. The ball was thrown a little bit low. Corey Smith went down, made a nice effort to get this football. It was pretty clear that he caught the ball. Catch. Yeah, oh, great his catch knee helped there. him. Yep. <laughs> knee helped him catch that from. You know, JT Barrett had a couple of plays exactly like that in last week's game against Indiana. And the ball was a little bit low. Ball one time it was high. If JT Barrett hits Corey Smith in, in stride there, that might have scored on a touchdown. 
Those are the little things, though, right? As yeah. You forget that this this, this kid's a, a redshirt freshman, and he's still learning the game and still getting comfortable. And uh, Urban Meyer, in talking with him during the week, said, you know, he can play even better than he has this season, which is kind of scary to think about. Well, we've grown accustomed to seeing him handle every After situation. Really on, on the field of a completed pass stand. First down. Clock will start on the ready for play with the ball at the 36-yard line. Still two timeouts remaining for the Buckeyes. And he wants him to go up tempo here. We're going to keep an eye on Devin Smith. He is their big play wide receiver, and in this red zone fringe area, Ohio State loves to take a shot at him. Off play action, and Barrett going to take a shot. Inside the five, the catch is made, but out of bounds was Devin Smith. Maybe lost it when he went out of bounds, but good coverage that time by Blake Countess. Second down with 29 seconds left. I think Michigan was thinking the same thing. In this kind of scenario, they're going to take the shot. Blake Countess in great position there. And Devin Smith unable to come down with the football. Yeah, clearly incomplete. And he would have been out of bounds anyway. Had he made the catch, so it's second down and 10. Barrett again to the air. Going to swing it to Samuel inside the 30, and he gets hammered out of play by Ben Gideon. He got the first down, though, at the 25-yard line with 23 seconds remaining. Mm. Took one for the team, though. Ran straight ahead to get the first down and <laughs> make it an easier field goal try, perhaps, for Nuremberger. They can throw it in the middle of the field if they decide with those two timeouts. 23 seconds on the clock. We'll see how Michigan handles this. Barrett going to take a shot to the end zone. Jump ball broken up. Intended for Thomas. Jordan Lewis, sophomore out of Detroit, is going to be a really good player for Michigan. Knocked it away. Back to back. Three plays, two shots downfield. Jordan Lewis in perfect position looking back for the football. Confident that he's in position, and we're talking with Greg Madison this week about Jordan Lewis. He says he's going to be an outstanding football player. 17 seconds left. Would be about a 43 or 44 yard field goal try from here. Barrett with time, pumps, now steps up and runs. Inside the 20, inside the 10, Barrett to the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. He scores with seven seconds left in the half. <laughs> Rushing touchdown number 10 for Barrett. We talked about his Heisman candidacy. It just went up. He can beat you in so many ways. We saw two weeks ago against Minnesota. He ran for 80-yard touchdown. You cover everybody downfield. Michigan's in good position, and you miss one tackle, and he jukes out Jake Ryan. Take a look. Ryan's right in the middle of the field. Here he is. He'll have the opportunity once JT Barrett finally decides to run the football. So much green grass, only a three-man rush, and one move right there, and a missed tackle, and JT Barrett has the speed to get to the end zone and ties up this, this football game. How difficult is it, Brian, as a, as a freshman, to see the field the way he does and, and make plays like this to extend a play where it could have been a sack or he could have just thrown it away? Instead, it's, it's six points. Some quarterbacks just have that innate ability to see the field, to, to not under pressure, to not freak out, you know, to, to, to go through your process and to make the right decisions. And, and let's give credit to, to JT Barrett. The thing that probably most impressed me in talking to his coaches, Tom Herman and, and Urban Meyer is his preparation. He is one of the more disciplined players in all of college football and preparation during the week, knowing exactly what defenses he's seeing, what decisions he should be making, and, and that gives him a great head start in making those decisions on a consistent basis. Michigan with all the momentum in the world, and then Barrett, 44th touchdown responsible for this year, a Big Ten record. They had 93 yards on their first four drives. Ohio State did. Remember, they started in Michigan territory twice, though. That drive, 83 yards in 10 plays, took 2.08 off the clock to tie the game. 
Now Clinton kicking off. And Northley past the 10. Penalty marker down. Northley isn't though. Northley finally brought down to the 28. No time remaining in the half, but let's see what the penalty marker is for. So Michigan penalty here. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 36, return team. That penalty's declined. Half time. Well, Ohio State was a heavy favorite last year, won by a point. A heavy favorite in 2012, won by a handful. Heavy favorite again here in 2014. Three touchdown favorite. And we're tied at intermission here in Columbus. JT Barrett with a touchdown run to tie it with seven seconds left in the first half. And let's check in with Tom. Coach, after the long play you gave up to Devin Funches, you haven't been able to get off the field on defense. What tweaks are you going to make on that side of the football to turn that around? Well, we've been a good tackling team all year, and I don't feel like we're tackling well, and we started the game strong on defense, but you can't give up a 95-yard drive either. You got out of rhythm a little bit on offense there, but then get back into it, get the ball coming out in the third quarter. Offensively, what adjustment do you need to make to get J.T. Barrett back in the rhythm? I think we got to play the game a little bit on the perimeter. That's what we did in the last drive, so we're going to go in there and talk about it, but we got to get out of that little rut and get on the edge a little bit. All right, thanks, Coach. wonder if he's referring to Jalen Marshall, who had zero touches on offense in the first half after four consecutive touchdowns last week to beat Indiana. ESPN and ABC College Football. Presented by Kate Jewelers, we'll continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the ESPN Rivalry Series, presented by Jiffy Lube. Welcome back to ESPN on ABC College Football presented by Kate Jewelers as part of ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lou. Trying to keep the peace here in Columbus. Let Ohio State run out of the tunnel first. Once they clear the field to the sideline, then it's Michigan's turn. And this has been a typical Michigan-Ohio State game. Close, physical, and good quarterback play so far. Certainly punch, counterpunch, a tie ball game. Nobody should be surprised. Each quarterback has had their plays, but it hasn't been much through the air. It's been with their feet. Devin Gardner has made some plays getting out of the pocket. This was a third down here in the red zone where he gets a first down down to the one-yard line. That leads to the go-ahead score. Uh, time being for Michigan and JT Barrett. Take a look at the decisions that JT Barrett has made. They want to throw the swing pass. It's not there. This was a big third down on the last drive that they go down and tie it up. He gets a first down and then here. Doesn't force the ball down the field. Doesn't try to fit it in to a tight window. Maintains his composure. Uses his feet. One cut gets Jake Ryan on the ground and he finishes to tie the football game at halftime. That was with seven seconds remaining. Barrett's 10th rushing touchdown close again on 1,000 rushing yards on the season. And 3,000 passing yards. Meanwhile, Gardner who threw for over 400 yards and a one-point loss in Ann Arbor last year. Threw a pick on his first attempt, but pretty good sense, and that's a big reason why Michigan is tied with Ohio State. Buckeyes will get the ball to start the second half. Curtis Samuel, Evan Spencer are deep while kicking off. Short kickoff, and here is Samuel across the 20 yard line. And up to the 28. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. It was 7 0 Ohio State. Michigan tied it and then took the lead. A 95 yard drive 
Capped by a Drake Johnson two-yard run. That took more than seven minutes off the clock. And a nice two-minute drill by the Buckeyes and Barrett with a 25-yard touchdown run to tie the game just before intermission. And this is a big drive in this game. The first drive of the third quarter. Ohio State gets the football with momentum coming off of that touchdown drive. And here's Barrett on the keeper on first down. Ahead of the 31 for about three. Let's check in with Tom Luganville. Well, guys, we heard Urban Meyer talk about attacking the perimeter on offense. He wants to take some of the pressure off of JT Barrett. Well, that means getting the ball to the hands of number 17, Jalen Marshall. A week ago, four consecutive touchdowns on touches. Hasn't seen the ball yet today. And there you see Barrett's numbers throwing the football. Got three yards there. And Jalen Marshall has accounted for eight touchdowns this year as Barrett keeps and gets dropped after a gain of one. Ryan Glasgow tripped him up and then finished off by James Ross. So Ohio State faced with a third and long on the opening possession of the second half. And first time we've seen the option in this game, and that's exactly what Urban Meyer was talking about, getting that ball to the edge with an option to pitch it. Well defended by Michigan, brings up a third and six. Only a 50% completion percentage for Barrett so far in the game. Third down and six. And wide open is Jeff Hireman, the tight end, in the middle of the field. It's a first down. Hireman had been wearing number five, a tribute to uh, Braxton Miller, but went back to his number 86 for senior day today. Yeah, and this was, this was really easy. You see Jalen Marshall, he clears out. A lot of attention. Jake Ryan runs with him, and nobody left for Hireman. Jalen Marshall affects the game, even if he's not touching the ball, Dave, and that was a, a perfect instance. 17 catch on the year for Hireman, his 33rd career start. A fresh set of down for the Buckeyes. Another pass play. Barrett going to air it out, going deep. And the pass is on the money. Caught inside the five by Devin Smith. What a throw by J.T. Barrett. Devin Smith has been the big play wide receiver for Ohio State for a long time. You give J.T. Barrett that amount of time in the pocket and that ball perfectly thrown. 52-yard strike by J.T. Barrett, and it's a first and goal inside the Michigan Five. Barrett gets a block from Elliott, and Barrett finds Pater. Buckeyes back on top. Penalty flag thrown late on the far side of the field. So in just over two minutes time, there it is, two touchdowns. That's on Jordan Lewis, so the touchdown counts. They'll assess the penalty on the kickoff. JT Barrett with three touchdowns accounted for in this game, and now 45 total scores for Barrett this year. Nurnberger on for the point after. And it's back to a seven-point Ohio State lead. And a statement coming out of the locker room at halftime by Ohio State and their leader, JT Barrett, all year. But the big throw downfield, you cannot place that ball any better to Devin Smith. Sometimes the best man for the job is a woman. Marvel's Agent Carter premieres Tuesday, January 6th. Ohio State with a score to end the half and start the second half to turn a seven-point deficit quickly into a seven-point advantage. JT Barrett, great pass to senior Devin Smith. Number three all-time and touchdown receptions trailing Chris Carter, who's here in attendance by one. And he got Ohio State down to the three-yard line before Barrett did the rest for a second rushing touchdown today. 
penalty on Michigan after the touchdown, so that's why Ohio State is kicking off from midfield. And Northley, no intention of running it out. Touchback, and we'll come out to the 25. Everybody's gotten to know JT Barrett this season, but take a look. This is one of the sweetest strokes in all of college football. You give him this amount of time, and he has got a rocket for an arm, and the accuracy that he has displayed time and again. He's had some plays here and there where he's missed a couple of bites, but on, on the total, he has been very accurate all season long, and when you got a guy with the speed of Devin Smith downfield, and you have to come up if you're a safety to play in that run game, you're going to have those kinds of opportunities over the top. And, Brian, he completes some of those passes that were question marks for Braxton Miller, the guy that he took over for. Now, let's see how Devin Gardner responds with his team down seven. Didn't seem to phase Michigan in the first half. Couple of uh, nifty fakes there, run and pass fake, and then they hand it off to Johnson. Let's go to the studio and check in with Robert. All right, Dave, Georgia Tech and Georgia nicknamed their series Clean Old Fashioned Hate. And in this game, there have been three turnovers inside an opponent's five yard line. This one picked up by Damian Swain for Georgia. He goes 99 yards, Bulldogs on top, 14 7. And here it's 21-14, Ohio State, Michigan on second down running. And Johnson is wrapped up by Joey Bosa and tossed down. He's able to pick up two or three, so a third down and a yard coming up here for Michigan. Wolverines were excellent on third down in the first half. They possessed the ball almost twice as long as Ohio State did. They certainly don't want to give it back to Ohio State with all the momentum favoring the home team. Johnson between the tackles, first down and more. Great run as Johnson splatters the pile and moves it out to the 42 for an eight-yard run on third and one. Devion Smith has been the hammer, the thumper for Michigan all season, but Drake Johnson shows you he can get behind his pads. He runs right over Grant, the middle linebacker. And that's the kind of run that you can get some momentum built off. It's been a physical game. Have we saw some big hits in the first half of this game? I don't see it changing any in the second. From the Michigan 42. Gardner, he's going to try a deep ball. It's underthrown and incomplete. Intended for Amara Darbo. There were two Buckeyes in coverage. Tyvis Powell was one of them. He had the game-saving interception on that two-point try by Michigan in the game last year. I, I don't mind taking an aggressive shot downfield, but don't do it in a two-deep coverage. Here you got two guys for one, and Tyvis Powell's in good position. He's looking at the quarterback, and that ball in the throne, and Devin Gardner is fortunate that that ball was not intercepted by Tyvis Powell. Second down and 10 for the senior from Detroit. Gonna hand it off here, Northley with a crease into Buckeye territory, and a penalty flag comes soaring in from the back judge. Pretty good arm. Uh, flag was thrown about 20 yards. Norfleet perhaps shaken up on the play. I think they're going to get Amara Darbo, the receiver who was blocking out in front of Norfleet. Got a little tug on the Ohio State defender. Holy offense number 88. 10 yards to five. Second down. And caught on Jake Butt. That's the second Michigan penalty. The number two in the country, fewest penalties per game. Got it on Butt right there. Trying to disengage. And that negates a first down. Brady Hoke in what could be his final game. Michigan five and six. Need to win to get bowl eligible. Hope six and nine, last two years in conference. Kettering, Ohio native, about an hour from Columbus, but he was a Michigan fan growing up. As Gardner dumps it off and wide open is Johnson, and Johnson takes on a defender, Duran Grant, and the tailback wins that one. 
Just short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Well, and give an assist to Joe Carriage. Take a look at number 36, the halfback. He's going to pick up Grant, the blitzing linebacker, and the blitz leaves the flat open for Drake Johnson. Good recognition from Devin Gardner and puts himself in a manageable situation here, a third and short. They hammered it between the tackles last time, and Brady Hope going to call a timeout here. Third down and one. Awfully early in the uh, third quarter to use a timeout. That'll leave Michigan with two. ESPN College Football, presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Vizio Ultra HD, nothing is more captivating. And Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Well, Brady Hope called a timeout. That was not to challenge it, but what it did do is give the officials time for an official review, and they look at it and overturn the ruling on the field. It is a first down for Michigan at the Ohio State 48. As Drake Johnson picked it up. But it does cost Michigan a timeout, leaving them to two. Uh, I think it's worth it, though. I mean, you get a first down here. That was a big first down. There were a couple of questionable timeouts in last week's game in the second half against Maryland that Brady Hope used. But that one, if you get a first down in that situation, is well worth Gardner to the air. And Gardner gets hit. And Funch is able to catch up to it on the sideline. First down at the 33-yard line. A 15-yard pickup. Devin Funch is having a terrific ball game here today in Columbus. Well, it's been this route to the outside predominantly. He definitely had the left foot in and looked like he had control of that football. The ball floated because Gardner got hit. It's Bosa. And Michigan can't block 97. They, they, they have to just throw the ball quick if they're going to throw it at all. Here's Johnson between the tackles. And stopped at the 30. Curtis Grant, Michael Bennett in there. A three-yard pickup, though. Michigan with a nice response here in this possession after the Buckeyes score with seven seconds left in the first half and a quick score to start the second half to retake the lead. Well, it's amazing what Michigan, you know, offensively can do, and they just protect the football. I mean, that's been the thing. They can't protect the football all year long, 25 turnovers, and since that first egregious interception, they've protected it, and they've moved the football. You see the time of possession heavily favoring Michigan. Second down and six inside the Buckeye 30. Pressure coming. Gardner in trouble, gets rid of it. And it's incomplete. Is there a receiver in the area? Only a couple of offensive linemen. That should be grounding, and a penalty marker is thrown. It was a screen. They were trying to set up the screen to Jake Johnson. Johnson was in the middle of the field. There's the no five for intentional grounding on the play. Number 20 was in the area. Good job. They were close to being in the area. You're going to see they're going to set up. Here's Johnson here. They're just going to set up a little screen, and eventually there's going to be pressure pretty quickly. He gets knocked off and held. Could have called holding on Michael Bennett, and they throw the football away. So I mean, Drake Johnson was on the ground at the 32-yard line. That was thrown near three offensive linemen. But now it's third down and six rather than third down and about 15. Penalty flag down, might be a free play. Gardner in trouble, fumbled the ball. It's recovered by Ohio State. Again, a penalty marker is down, might be against the Buckeyes. Curtis Grant with the fumble recovery. Darren Lee forced it out. Outside, defense number 97. Third down. That's on Bosa. It'll be third down and one now for Michigan instead of a turnover. And Bosa lines up on the edge. He's right here. Does he get off before the snap of the football? Just a flinch. Well, you saw Jack Miller, the center. The head bob and Bosa jump. Michigan very fortunate. It's been a 
Achilles heel most of this season and quite frankly for the career of Devin Gardner holding on to the football too long and then turn it over. Fortunate that uh, they got a penalty there. They're minus 15 on the year. That's the worst for a Big Ten team since 2007. But they're only minus one today. After that one is called back because of the foul. The offside, they're measuring just to see how long it is, but it is third down and one. Inside the 25. Well, Michigan's had success in third and short all game, and it's been Drake Johnson being physical, getting below his pads. Joe Carrick, the fullback, as a lead blocker. Wonder if Dutton Nussmeyer will get it to him again, or think that Ohio State will sell out to stop Johnson and have play action. It's carriage on third and one, and he's able to get it. He was met at the point of attack and just powered through a tackle to move the chains. At some point in this game, it's mono a mono, and it's who wants it more. And Joe Carriage has made play after play, blocking, catching the ball out of the backfield on third and short, his second conversion. What an outstanding football player that young man is. That's a 300-pound defensive lineman in Adolphus, Washington, that a 240-pound fullback just ran through to get that first down. Another long drive, 11th play coming up, four and a half minutes on this possession. They got a hurry with the play clock down to six. They've already burned a timeout on this possession. Here's the pitch. Johnson going to throw it back. Gardner, the former receiver, catches it inside the 10. First and goal inside the five for the Wolverines. You, had, you knew the Brady Hope coming into this game with nothing to lose was going to empty the tank. They're going to pitch it out, and then the quarterback is just going to release out the backside. And Drake Johnson completes that ball to Devin Gardner. You knew, and you get in that red zone fringe area where teams like to take a shot downfield with the fast flow of the defense for Ohio State. Good play call from Doug Nesman. All tight ends and two backs here. Power football. Mike Leland first and goal inside the five. Johnson into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. Joe Carriage is lighting people up. The Michigan fullback springing Drake Johnson, who's shaken up after scoring his second touchdown of the game. And you mentioned that Drake Johnson gets into the end zone. Carriage. All day has been the lead blocker, and looks like Johnson's holding his left knee there. A touchdown for Michigan to tie it up, but how costly in the end. Where he knew right away. He grabbed that yep. left knee right yep. away. And he's been getting the bulk of the carries here today. We've seen Justice Hayes a couple times. Davion Smith hasn't played often. You know, he, he looked like he, he made a cut at the two-yard line, a pretty severe cut, and I don't know that he didn't hurt the knee on the cut before he got in the end zone. Right, non-contact. You see his numbers on the day, two touchdowns. He had two rushing touchdowns all season. They're already down Derek Green, right, who was, good, who was their feature back all year. We haven't seen a whole lot of Davion Smith. Justice Hayes is a more of a scat back kind of, uh, that doesn't carry the load on an every down basis. So Drake Johnson's really an important factor for Michigan. The big picture, even if Ohio State goes on to win this game, if you're Urban Meyer, you're, you're unhappy with the defense. You give up a 95 yard drive in the first half, and now a 12 play 75 yard drive in the second half and after the point after from while we are tied at 21. They were off the field if Joey Bosa doesn't jump off sides at the turnover. The throw back to Gardner sets up the touchdown run by Drake Johnson all even midway through the third here in Columbus. Tonight on ABC, the Oregon Ducks head to Corvallis to take on Oregon State, the historic Civil War rivalry game, Saturday night football, 8 Eastern on ABC. Three impressive scoring drives by Michigan, seven plays, 80 yards, 15 plays, 95 yards, now 12 plays, 75 yards, and in case you missed the touchdown by Johnson, video of it now posted on the Sports Center app. 
question is, did he lose Johnson for the game? He was hurt on that touchdown and tied it at 21 midway through the third quarter. And again, Ohio State finds itself in a close game in the second half here at home. Just like last week against Indiana before the Buckeyes eventually pulled away. Here's Samuel on the return for the Buckeyes. And good coverage by Michigan. Samuel tackled short of the 20. Check in with Tom. Well, guys, the Michigan offensive line has been a, a major Achilles heel, along with being minus 14 in turnover margin. But when it comes to the run game today, this, uh, this Michigan offensive line has pushed the pile. They've maintained the line of scrimmage, and they've been able to get critical downs in short yardage run situations. This is a young offensive line with a lot of sophomores and freshmen littered in. Today, they're earning their keep. 110 rushing yards from Michigan. That's that a little deceiving because they had all those rushing yards lost on the sacks. My Ohio State taking down Gardner. Out of an empty set, Barrett on the run here on first down. And Barrett gang tackled to the 25-yard line, five or six yards on first and ten. Well, to follow up on, on what Luke's is saying, even maybe more important than the yards that they've gained has been the time of possession and taking the time off of the clock, knowing that, listen, Ohio State's got a very explosive offense. We need to protect our defense. We can't leave them out on the field for 80, 90 plays and hope that they'll be fresh in the fourth quarter when we need them the most. Again, we still have not seen Jalen Marshall get into the action on offense for Ohio State. Second down and five. Elliott able to move the pile past the first down marker. Another powerful running back, 225 pound sophomore, Ezekiel Elliott. Sixth in the Big Ten at just under 100 yards rushing per game. Well, and we've seen some powerful runs from Drake Johnson and Ezekiel Elliott. Equally as powerful at 225 pounds, just pushing the pile, and that time ran right over Jake Ryan. Got to run Elliott again, and he's to the 35-yard line. Chris Warmly on the tackle, but they're getting four or five yards now on first down. That gives uh, the Buckeyes a lot more options as Jalen Marshall checks in. Again, no touches for him on offense so far in this game. And it seems like the pace for Ohio State is not as, as fast as it normally has been. They're slowing it down a little bit here in the second half. It's allowing Michigan to substitute on the defensive line. They're going to rotate eight to ten guys. Greg Madison will on that defensive line to stay fresh. Second down and long, and here's Barrett, and good tackle there at the ankles by Joe Bolden. Otherwise, it's a first down and more for J.T. Barrett. It'll bring up third down and about three. Well, this is the play that's killed defenses, this counter, this counter game with the quarterback. He comes to the weak side. If Joe Bolden does not make this shoestring tackle, J.T. Barrett's running in the secondary. Great job by Bolden. Young player, this Michigan defense, as good as they are, a top 10 defense, they have a lot of young players, and Greg Madison says he's as excited about the future of this Michigan defense as any. Ohio State trying to keep the drive going with a quarterback run. Barrett bouncing off of a tackle and gets the first down. Again, JT Barrett so hard to get to the ground. Rare he goes down on first contact. He's another running back back there, and when he gets his shoulder pads vertical downfield, you see that he runs right over Joe Bolden. A normal quarterback against a linebacker like that would get driven back five yards, but J.T. Barrett at 225 pounds always falls forward. You know, so much talk about, well, what happens next year? Braxton Miller's back and healthy. J.T. Barrett's a sophomore. I think a lot depends on what happens the rest of this season with regard to who the quarterback is. Barrett with time, and Barrett now has to step up with everybody covered, and Barrett gets back to the line of scrimmage. Mario Ojemudia, who we have not called his name as of yet, makes a play. They are high on this junior from Farmington Hills. Well, I, just to finish on, on your kind of line of thought there, Braxton Mella, I, there's no way that I would be able to take J.T. Barrett off the field with the way that he's been playing. He, he runs the entirety of the offense and understands how to go through the reads and process information very quickly and get the ball to the right spot consistently. And that's just something that you, you can't teach innately with a quarterback. 
They run Elliott straight ahead, and he's to the 47. What happens, though, if you lose to Michigan? And you said before you're judged on how you yep. play against Michigan. Braxton Miller's 2-0. and Or 2-1, and one, excuse me. He played as a true freshman on the road in Ann Arbor. Braxton Miller's an unbelievable football player. I mean, it's not to say that... Uh, that he is not a phenomenal player. Uh, he will continue to be a phenomenal player. It's just, I think, if I'm Urban Meyer, the way that JT Barrett operates this offense fits me a little bit better in what I want to accomplish. All run plays on this drive. Now it's third and six. We'll see if the Buckeyes try to air it out. Barrett back to throw. Barrett hit, and he still delivers a strike. A first down catch by Michael Thomas. You see Jordan Lewis slap the ground in frustration, saying, I did everything I could to cover the guy. Now, there is a penalty marker down. On the far there side of the no field. Foul for a defensive foul in the previous play. First down. You ask me why? Why, JT Barrett? This is the reason why. On a critical third down, in tight coverage, a blitz right up the middle, you stand in there, look down the barrel of the gun, and fire that ball in the only place that Michael Thomas can make that play. That right there is the reason why JT Barrett, in my opinion, should be the quarterback. Well, he picked up third down using his legs late in the first half. There he does it with his arm. A great throw. Nearing three minutes to go in the third. We are tied at 21. And now Barrett pulling it back. And wide open, Nick Van Nett, who scored a first half touchdown. That's a huge block. Finally tackled inside the 25. First down, Buckeyes. 22-yard gain. Again, a great read. The open receiver, he finds him. Take a look at Corey Smith. Great block, a clean block, most importantly, but a great block by Corey Smith. Gets an extra 15 yards. And Ohio State on the move, looking to retake the lead. Here's a pitch to Elliott inside the 20 and upended around the 16-yard line by Channing Stribling, second down. Get the sense that these offenses, both offenses, are exerting their will different ways, but both exerting their will against these defenses, and we've gone back and forth on the scoreboard. Ohio State picking up the tempo here. Barrett pumps, and now in trouble in the pocket, being chased from behind, and gets rid of it. And Barrett running around in circles, almost tripped over a Michigan player, but kept the play alive and threw it away. Great coverage on the outside. Take a look at the coverage out here. They're going to try to get the slip screen, the pump on the slip screen, and then downfield. But Delano Hill, number 44, the safety, doesn't bite. And that allows Taco Charlton to get in the backfield. And then I think a smart throw away from JT. That's a great play. I mean, how many quarterbacks would just go down there after you spin and there's a defender right there? He jumps over the guy and still gets out of the pocket and throws it away. And here's Jalen Marshall getting a touch on third down. And Marshall inside the 10. Banged out a play at the 7, but it's first and goal Buckeyes. They finally get Marshall involved on that little touch pass by Barrett. You put that much speed of Jalen Marshall on the perimeter with great blocking. Look at Ezekiel Elliott. He gets a great block. We know that he's an unselfish player. And then a little, a little move on Joe Bolden, an easy conversion for Jalen Marshall. Barrett off the edge, down to the five-yard line. Ryan Glasgow eventually got Barrett down, but it took a while. Barrett kept those feet moving, so it's second and goal at the five-yard line. Ohio State has won nine in a row since a loss on September 6th to Virginia Tech. And the Buckeyes have creeped into the playoff conversation. They are number six in the latest rankings, trying to Keep their hopes alive. They got the Big Ten title game next week against either Wisconsin or Minnesota. Second and goal. Barrett looking. And the pass incomplete. Hit the back pylon intended for Corey Smith, but they're going to throw a penalty marker here. Late flag with Delano Hill covering. Looked like he interfered with Smith. There's nowhere to throw that football. Delano Hill was in between the receiver and JT Barrett. Pass interference, defense, number 35. Foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. 
first down. But I said it was on Bolden, the linebacker, not Delano Hill. That looked like Hill was in good position. Let's take a look at uh, Bolden. He's in the flat, trying to trying to cover Ezekiel Elliott. They had to call it on Hill, but it didn't look like a good call. The pass was way off target. And now Barrett handing it off. Elliott powers in. Touchdown, Ohio State. Did his knee hit before the ball crossed the plane? No, I think he's in there. It's pretty clear. Knee crossed that uh, plane of the goal line before that knee went down. Ninth rushing touchdown for Ezekiel Elliott. 14 play, 81 yard drive. The Buckeyes taking six and a half minutes off the clock. And Nurnberger makes it a seven point lead again for Ohio State with just over a minute remaining here in the third quarter. All right, so Ohio State with a seven-point lead. Michigan, though, has not been stopped really since that opening drive where they turned it over. What do you expect uh, in terms of adjustments maybe well, by Ohio State's defense? Well, I think the question is which defense is going to get that stop, right? And Ohio State has given up some very physical runs, and Devin Gardner running with his, with his legs has really been the difference. I think they're trying to get the football to Devin Funches. Ohio State has been able to get pressure on Devin Gardner. Can they get that pressure enough, and when they get there, get the football out and make that kind of uh, stamp on this game where they get that turnover and, and go down and, and put the game away. And can Michigan get a stop even if the Wolverines go down and score? Ohio State, since the end of the second quarter, has scored 21 points. They had seven through the first 29 minutes of this game. And you wonder now about Michigan's top tailback in this game, Drake Johnson. Will he be available after getting injured on that touchdown run? Maybe a touchback out to the 25. Let's check in with Tom for an injury update. Well, Drake Johnson seems to have tweaked the knee that he had been having some trouble with earlier on. They were working on, uh, working on him along the sidelines there. He's moving well. He looks like his normal self. The odd thing is, guys, that we've seen no semblance of rotation. Davion Smith, number four, has spent most of this game on the exercise bike on the sideline. And so let's keep close tabs and see just how much of a, of a load they decide to go with at the running back position. But right now, we see Justice Hayes. Yeah, we've seen Hayes a few times in the game, but... He's 190 pound back where uh, Johnson 210, Smith 220. Different style of back. Play fake. Gardner on the rollout. In trouble. Trying to stiff arm. And Gardner throws it away. He was hand fighting with Darren Lee. Trying to convert and throw the ball to the sideline for Chesson, second down. Well, and here comes Davion Smith into the ball game, and he's got 105 carries already this season, 515 yards and six touchdowns, so he's got a lot of experience. I'm not sure why he hasn't played yet in this football game. He's more of a, of a thumper inside the tackles, but that's the kind of game that Michigan's been playing anyway. They got the fullback carriage in two, second down and 10. He motions Smith out of the backfield. Quarterback run. And there's nowhere for Gardner to go. He takes a big hit from Michael Bennett. Only a two-yard pickup. So it brings up a third down and long, third and eight here for Michigan. Now, we haven't seen any kind of attempt to throw the football and take the top off the defense outside of the one deep throw to Devin Funches in the first half. And Ohio State now has decided to sell out to stop the run. We'll see if Michigan decides to take a shot over the top. Great day in college football. It makes it so unique. All these great rivalry games. And now with playoff implications. Michigan on third and eight. Gardner's pass is low and incomplete. Intended for Darbo. There is pressure on Gardner. And so it's fourth down. And you get the sense that without a consistent running game and Drake Johnson in the game, 
that Michigan's not going to be able to move the ball as successfully as it has all game. And that second time we've seen Darbo go down on a pass from Devin Gardner that was low. They had a first down completion early in the game, and then that ball was dropped. And again, the little things in the passing game that have plagued Michigan all season. You might look at this here. on the field on the previous play was an incomplete pass. That ruling is under further review. Yeah, you saw the feet of an official when we just showed you that replay had a beat on it staring right at it He said that it hit the ground now It can hit the ground if you control it, but it didn't seem that Darbo had control of it looked like he trapped it See the official looking on that if it stands this will be the first three and out for Michigan today well, It's hard to tell from that angle As you said the official was looking right at it. He's only about six or seven yards away yeah, it looks like it's an incompletion. After further review, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass stands. Fourth down. So fourth down, first three and out. Michigan turned it over on its first possession, but had not been stopped prior to that. Wolverines went to throw the ball on first down. And then they tried the quarterback run on second down, had to throw it on third and long, and now they'll punt. And if I were Ohio State and Urban Meyer, I would play safe on all these punts in the second half. I don't know what Brady Hoke's got up his sleeve, but special teams is an area where he might take a chance. And they faked the punt last week, and it worked against Maryland, but they'll kick it here. And it's a good punt. Marshall backing up. It takes a Michigan bounce inside the 25. And so Ohio State with two seconds left, they get one second left in the quarter. We'll have the football inside its 25. Let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. The Iron Bowl on ESPN tonight, Alabama, Oregon. Oregon, Oregon State on ABC. Florida State, Florida 3.30 on ESPN. TCU with a statement win at Texas on Thursday. Yeah, Texas is an outstanding defense. Offensively, they struggle, but I think pe people thought that uh, Texas might have a chance in that game, but TCU is not going to go away quietly in this whole chase for spot number four. We'll get in in the fourth quarter if Ohio State were to win about how this would impact where they end up in the rankings. They're going to run Elliott on first down and he's across the 30 and gets almost a first down. Picked up nine on the final play of the third quarter. Ohio State one quarter away from its 10th straight win. The Buckeyes lead Michigan, trying to end the Wolverine season. It's a seven-point game. Time for the good hands play, brought to you by Allstate. Devin Gardner with a pitch to Drake Johnson, the throwback to the former receiver, his first catch since 2012. Gardner takes it inside the five. And Johnson shaken up on the play, but scores at the time, the game time touchdown. Ohio State bounces back, a powerful run by Ezekiel Elliott. And the Buckeyes lead it by seven as we go to the fourth here at the Horseshoe. Ohio State leading the country in home attendance for the first time since 1973. And they set a record today in the 111th meeting with Michigan. Over 108,600 on hand. Buckeyes with a second down and one. And Barrett in trouble in the backfield is brought down for a loss by Ochimudia. Some pushing and shoving after the play. We haven't seen a lot of extracurricular activity in this game. As Barrett still down for Ohio State. He got bent back pretty, pretty significantly when he went down. Ochimudia had him and it was wrestling him to the ground. Oh boy, and obviously Braxton Miller is out for the year. Cardale Jones, a sophomore from Cleveland, is the next man up. Oh man, look at the look at the legs there with Ojemudia having made the tackle, and boy, that looks bad. Such an unbelievable season this kid has had coming from nowhere. Let's hope he's okay. Back in Columbus where JT Barrett is being carted off after a gruesome injury, being tackled by Mario Ojemudia. 
And they got the inflatable cast on the uh, right leg of Barrett and taking him to the Buckeye locker room. He's fighting for some extra yardage, and Ojemudia gets he gets him, and he, and he kind of comes Been down the back of his leg. Devin Gardner comes out to check on him, and it was the foot also. You could see the foot and the right leg, or right knee, I should say. Cardell Jones on the season, mostly in mop-up duty, 14 pass attempts, 24 carries. And it's up to him for now for Ohio State. And on third and two, he is trying to push to get the first down. And it will be close. Brian Monet was there for Michigan. Great second effort by Jones. But rolling in the field is its fourth down for Ohio State. JT Barrett has meant so much to Urban Meyer in Ohio State this year, knowing that he's unlikely to return this game and who knows how long he's out, Brian. What does this do to a team? Oh, gosh. Well, it's it, how many emotional losses can this team have? I mean, you watch your your unquestioned leader and your returning quarterback in, in Braxton Miller go down in, in camp. And then you have an unbelievable season from JT Barrett. Comes out of nowhere and leads this football team. And now yet again, twice, in one season you have this emotional loss and we'll see if they can respond and how Cardell Jones can respond. Great punt by Johnson. The Buckeyes trying to keep it from going into the end zone and no, it crossed the plane. It is a touchback so it will come out to the 20. So Michigan will have the ball down seven with 13 and a half remaining. And it just has to cross the plane here. 67 yard punt. That's a touchback. Pretty easy call there for the official. They were right on top of it. So obviously this is a big story for, for this game, Brian, and also now for the Big Ten Championship next week against either Wisconsin or Minnesota and maybe beyond. And obviously the committee is supposed to take uh, injuries into account also when picking its final four. Well, I mean, I, I hate to go right to the, the college football playoff and that because this is such a terrible injury for the kid. I mean, you think about JT Barrett and the way that he has played this season, what he's meant to this team, where he came from, his approach, his selfless approach to this team it's been phenomenal and certainly you're going to have as you see you know, Michigan nowhere to run in between the tackles you're going to have that conversation first and foremost Ohio State needs to win this football game how well can Cardell Jones as you see Braxton Miller in the press box two unbelievable players at the quarterback position now on the sideline and what will Cardell Jones do to go win this game for Ohio State the defense, obviously, uh, it's on them right now to stop Michigan's offense, something they did last time the Wolverines had the ball at three and out, the first three and out by Michigan in this game. And a loss of one for Davion Smith on first down. Now, it's Gardner trying to get outside, and he's pushed out of play and did pick up a couple yards to the 22, but it'll be third and long, and this is not where Michigan wants to be. Third and eight on the last possession, and looks like another third and eight here and Ohio State defensively has really found their stride in the second half of this game they gave up the initial touchdown drive in the third quarter but since then they have really clamped down and this has been the down for Joey Bosa for Michael Bennett for Adolphus Washington that defensive line up front really nobody on this offensive line for Michigan has been able to block them consistently on Michigan you got to get the ball out quick Gardner stepping up, looking for a running lane, and he can't find it. And he lost his lid on the play as well. Raquan McMillan on the tackle. Now a flag comes in. It's caught by Von Bell. <laughs> and they might be against Ohio State for yanking the helmet off of Devin Gardner when he was going down to the ground. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 97. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. You got to hold up if you're Joey Bosa there. Well, that's the second big penalty on Joey Bosa. Remember, he was offsides in the first half. That led to a Michigan touchdown, and that's just uncalled for there. You ripped the helmet off. It's a face mask call, and then, and then you rip it off. I mean, it's just not smart. It's not smart when you have the momentum in the second half. So he had him off the field. There's going to be yeah, a punt. Off the field, the quarterback is in the locker room. And, and you make a, an error like that that extends a drive. As good a player as Joey Bosa is, you can't have those, those mistakes. 
12 minutes remaining. Michigan down seven. First down in the Wolverine 40. Another pass on first down. Gardner dumps it off. Carriage. And he is up near the 47-yard line. Darren Lee on the tackle. Guys, there is a ton of energy down here. This place is loud, and the defense is feeding off of that JT Barrett injury. If you go back out to that cart, when they placed him on that cart, and you looked at those scarlet jerseys that came around the cart, they were defensive players. It was Curtis Grant. It was Joey Bosa. It was Eli Apple. Those are the guys that are now taking it upon themselves to win this game for that quarterback. And you heard chance from the crowd. Tom, JT, JT, and obviously people here recognize what Barrett has meant to Ohio State this year. And here's Smith, and he's able to get the first down into Buckeye territory to the 46-yard line. You know, there's 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 a few quarterbacks, very few quarterbacks can infiltrate the entire team and motivate the entire team. They can motivate their offense. But JT Barrett, in the short amount of time of this season, has been able to motivate this entire team, and they all love him and will play hard for him in this fourth quarter. Looked like he was saying go win the game to the defensive players that came over to him. Michigan, though, moving the ball, aided by an unnecessary roughness penalty for Joey Bosa ripping off Gardner's helmet. Play action on first down. Gardner stepping up, and Gardner looking for running room. Inside the 40, Gardner working hard, gets the first down to the 35-yard line. You get the sense watching Devin Gardner that it's, it's, he is razor thin and close to getting sacked and fumble in the pocket, and somehow he gets out of there. Bose is there, Bennett's there. And then Grant tries to get him on the ground. You heard Urban Meyer talk about tackling in the first half, that the defense needed to tackle better. They have done so in the second half, but on this drive in particular, a couple of missed tackles have extended the drive. And Devin Gardner playing in what could be his final game. Amazing highs for Gardner early in his career, incredible lows in his senior year, but can go off on the highest of notes with a win at Ohio State. North lead in trouble, brought down for a loss for about two or three as we check in with Robert Flores. All right, Dave, Taco Bell studio update on the SEC network. It's Georgia and Georgia Tech. Bulldogs lining up for a field. It's a fake. Marshall Morgan, the kicker. I don't even think he has pads on. Down at the three, they had to settle for a field goal. Yellow Jackets leading 21-17. And obviously, uh, Georgia, that were to win that game and then win the SEC championship would be in the playoff conversation with the Bulldogs in a fight. So are the Buckeyes, but they did take down Northley for a three-yard loss. He was shaken up on that play as well. Play clock at four, second and long, and no running room there. Smith brought down by Darren Lee, who knifed into the backfield. Another tackle for a loss. You see Lee comes right off the edge. This is a delay here. Here he comes. And this is a play you got to check out of if you're Devin Gardner. You got to see that play coming, that blitz off the edge coming. That play had no chance of success when you have a delayed handoff and a blitz that comes off the edge. Got to remember that field goal is in play here. You don't have to try to force the ball down the field to get to the 30, 28 yard line to have to field it. Their kicker, Matt Weil, his career long is 52. He's just 5 of 10, though, outside of 40 yards this year. Gardner, and that one is nearly intercepted. Von Bell, who picked off Gardner in the first quarter, stepped in front. Now, that pass intended for Darbo. Gardner was pressured, and now the Wolverines will have to punt it. Von Bell has come on this season, playing that safety position. Great break on the ball. That would have been a completion. I don't think it would have been a first down. But Bell gets a hand in there and forces a punt for Michigan. Now, this is the scenario. If I were Ohio State, I'd be real safe on the defensive side. How about fourth and 14? Hogger up trying to pin the Buckeyes deep. This will hit inside the five and go into the end zone. So a touchback. And the Buckeyes will have it with 8.25 remaining. And a seven-point lead. Hardale Jones trying to seal the deal on this possession, perhaps, for Ohio State. Well, Ohio 
Ohio State will have to finish this game without JT Barrett injured on this play on the last Ohio State drive. The inflatable cast on the right leg and carted off. The Buckeyes do lead it by seven though here in the fourth. Our Pacific Life game summary. Barrett before leaving a terrific performance in his first game against Michigan. Three touchdowns. Drake Johnson with two touchdowns for Michigan but he left with an injury. And now Cardell Jones, who is out for the last play when Barrett went down on the second down play. Now it's his game. Start of the year as the number three quarterback. Here's Elliott. And he gets about four. Gain of four on the play. Tom Luganville, our ESPN national recruiting director, has the story in Cardell Jones. Well, Cardell Jones is, is out of Glenville, Cleveland High School. It's been a football factory. It's where Ted Ginn went. He's a pocket guy. Wasn't recruited to play in this style of offense, but he's adapted. Not going to have that sudden running game. And that's what you're seeing right now with Jalen Marshall at quarterback. And Marshall picks a hole and has the first down out near the 35. Again, Marshall with limited touches today. Now with the injury to Barrett, we may see more of this here in the fourth quarter. Well, and how nice is it for Urban Meyer to be able to, to go with this changeup to have Jalen Marshall, the high school quarterback, who's got great vision and speed, a penalty flag down, to, to go to that, that wildcat formation as a changeup. Ball start. Offense number 86. Five-yard penalty, still first down. They had what they wanted there. They had the up-tempo. They went right back to the wildcat, and Jeff Hireman with movement and a five-yard penalty. Think about the emotions for Cardale Jones, though. I mean, now he's he's been on that sideline for a, a, a Michigan offensive series and, and had a chance to think about the gravity of this situation. He saw how severe that injury was, and everything's still on the plate for Ohio State. In this game, next week, Big Ten Championship and beyond, you wonder what's going through the head of number 12 right there. On first and 15, Jones will throw, and that one off target. Try to hit Michael Thomas. Look like maybe rush that one. Second down and 15. But as, as Luke said, this is this offense is fundamentally different, in my opinion, with Cardell Jones at quarterback. He does not have that elusive element that Braxton Miller had and that JT Barrett had. And so uh, you've got to adjust on the fly if you're Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator, and get this kid into a rhythm early in this game. Problem is, it's the fourth quarter, only seven and a half minutes left. They shift Elliott across the formation, quarterback run. Jones past the 30, turns it upfield, and Jones tripped up. But after he got the first down on second and 15, he gets about 18. Well, at 250 pounds, he shows that he can run as well. He, they had the perfect play call. They brought a blitz from the field. Greg Madison trying to dial up the pressure. And Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator, has the answer roll his quarterback away from him. It's a bright young mind here in college football, Tom Herman. You mentioned, uh, you would imagine that his name will be mentioned for some head coaching jobs, came from Iowa State. Coach Meyer, when he hired him, they had never met. Just talked on the phone and got together, and eventually Herman was hired as Elliott. Out of pound between the tackles, gets to about midfield for a three-yard pickup. Seven minutes and counting. Here in the fourth, Ohio State leading by seven. And we talked about the adjustments for Ohio State and how they potentially change their offensive philosophy. Michigan now has to adjust as well and say, okay, what do we know about Cardale Jones and, and how are we going to attack? If there's less of the perimeter threat in this offense, how are we going to attack Cardale Jones and try to get him off his spot? And a play clock at, at 11 here in Ohio State. They're trying to get lined up. Second down and eight. Here comes Marshall, that touch pass to Marshall, and he can't get the corner. Well defended by the Wolverines. Only a one-yard pickup. Oh, Jamudia had the edge that time along with Wilson. That's tough, too. Cardell Jones, you come in, you run that touch pass in practice. Now you get to do it in the game. Yep. And it's well executed, but Michigan defended it well also. Now we'll see what Tom Herman does. Big third down and six here. Will he let Cardell Jones throw the football? Would you? You got a lead, up seven, six minutes to go. Do you run, take time off the clock? Listen, you, I, you're gonna, you're gonna. This is your quarterback for the rest of the year. You have to assume that based on what we saw. You got to get him, let him throw the football. I would target Hireman. Jones.
Jones going to swing it out. And Corey Smith fighting for the first down. And it looks like he got it. Nope, they're going to say stepped out just short. Stribbling with a tackle. Ohio State may go for it here on fourth down and one inside the Michigan 45. Great effort by Smith on the sideline. He drives for three yards plus. That yeah, was a good spot. Yep. Came up about a yard short. Buckeyes are going for it. Do you like this decision here? Seven point lead going quarter, for it. a quarterback that's 250 pounds, I think I'd let him keep it and have Ezekiel as a lead blocker. They're trying to go quickly here. Or maybe they're just going to try to get Michigan to jump offside. Play clock is down at three, so they got to make a decision here. And Ohio State does call a timeout with one on the play clock. So they'll talk about it a little bit more. Will we see him go or a punt here on fourth down with five minutes to go? ESPN College Football, presented by Kate Jewelers. Brought to you by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. AT&T, mobilizing your world and dawn of the planet of the apes on digital hd today typical michigan ohio state game intrigue drama physical play and another close one ohio state heavy favorites for the third straight year with michigan fighting and the buckeyes are going to go for it on fourth down and one at the michigan 44 yard line with a seven point lead five minutes remaining cardio jones the quarterback First down and more, and Elliott's going to have a touchdown on fourth and one. Elliott takes it to the house. A 44-yard touchdown sprint by Ezekiel Elliott, and the Buckeyes have a two-touchdown lead. The courage to make the big decision to go for it on fourth down in the fourth quarter for Urban Meyer is rewarded. In this game, fourth quarter is all that really matters. And if you have the courage to make that call and execute it to perfection, you got a great chance of winning the football game. And that's just, that's what happened. 35-21, Ohio State under five to play. Great blocking up front. Ryan can't get the ankle tackle, and Ezekiel Elliott into the end zone. Urban Meyer's team up two scores late. Still on the Watch ESPN app, Dave. I don't think he had the same speed that uh, number 15 just did on that fourth down and one, but both are touchdowns, a 44-yard scamper, and the Buckeyes now lead by two scores. Trying to win the game for the third straight year, and for the first time in Big Ten history, go undefeated and untied consecutive, uh, three consecutive seasons in conference play. The last loss by Ohio State in Big Ten action was the 2011 Michigan game in Ann Arbor. Uh, when Urban Meyer was supposed to broadcast the game, but didn't want to take away from uh, Luke Fickle and cause a distraction by being on the air that day, so asked off, and then was later named the head coach of the Buckeyes. The rumors were going out at that point. Northfleet passed the 20-yard line. Michigan will have it at the 22. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. You think about the influence that Jalen Marshall has on Michigan's defense. He's in the backfield. Watch both safeties react to the play action. And Jalen Marshall, both of them run. All three guys run. That leaves the counter wide open on the inside. Really, Jake Ryan is the player that needs to make this play. He's shooting that A-gap, and he's the one that has the opportunity to make the play. Unable to get Ezekiel Elliott on the ground. And how, how uh, fitting it is for Ezekiel Elliott to come up with the play of the game after how he's played in this game, specifically without the ball in his hands, unselfish blocking in the passing game and in the running game. 
Now Devin Gardner down two scores, needs to work fast. The completion out near the 17-yard line is Jake Butt. You know, and Elliott, you know, everybody talks obviously about Braxton Miller and what he did last year. JT Barrett and what he's been able to accomplish. Ezekiel Elliott is a guy that doesn't get a lot of pub, but he's had a great year. Another thousand-yard rushing season. 121 today and two scores. I mean, such a, a multi-purpose, but he's kind of like a, in a basketball that move without the football in his hands. He does a great job. Diving to make the catch at the 38-yard line is Darbo, so that's a Michigan first down. Darbo will stop as they reset the chain. He's had an opportunity to make a couple of these kinds of plays in this game. Nice job diving and making a play for his quarterback. If Michigan doesn't come back, its season is over. O'Brady hopes tenure at Michigan be over after four seasons. Here comes a blitz. It's picked up. Gardner, though, is wrapped up by Bosa. The ball's out. Darren Lee's got it for Ohio State. Going for the exclamation point. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Second fumble recovery for a touchdown this year by Darren Lee. And it's 20 unanswered points. About to become 21 straight. You think about 10 minutes ago in this game, JT Barrett's laying on the field of Ohio Stadium, and it's a one-score game. And now, 10 minutes later, this team is up, going to go up 20 points in this game. And all of a sudden, the style points are there. 42-21 with four minutes to go. They struggled to block this defensive line for Ohio State all game. And when you combine that with holding the football, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Bosa's going to come off the edge. He's done it all game long. Gets a hand on the football, and then Lee, the true freshman, the beneficiary, picks it up, and that's a microcosm of Michigan season all year long. You just Once you pump that ball, especially in a game like this where you know you've been pressured all game, once you pump that ball, you have to have an internal clock in your head and know that this defensive front is going to be there. And, and then when, when you separate both hands from the football, well, that's when it comes out. Well, the final score may end up looking like it wasn't that close of a game, but Urban Meyer knows that his team has some work to do with either Wisconsin or Minnesota next week in the Big Ten Championship game. And likely with Cardell Jones as his quarterback. Yeah. Well, and that, it happened last week against Indiana. It was, it was a close game. It was a one-score game in the fourth quarter, and, and then the floodgates open. And this will be a, a similar result. And you wonder, yeah, you wonder you look, as you look forward in that playoff committee how they will look at Ohio State led by a Cardell Jones versus a JT Barrett. It'll be a touchback here. And so let's go to Robert in the studio. All right, Dave, another update on a, a wild game between Georgia Tech and Georgia on the SEC Network. Hudson Mason of Malcolm Mitchell puts the Bulldogs up, but Georgia Tech is lining up for a field goal right now as we speak. Bulldogs clinging to a three-point lead, but just four seconds to go. And Georgia ninth in the college football playoff rankings. Ohio State is sixth. First things first for the Buckeyes when it comes to the committee. They got to beat a good team next week, either Wisconsin or Minnesota. And they, they beat Minnesota two weeks ago on the road, but it wasn't an easy game. JT Barrett with his legs basically won that game, and now Barrett unlikely to play in that contest. Well, it's the one thing that I, I'm not... I don't know how the committee is going to do this. I don't know how they're going to look at injury. You see this completion of Jake Butt. I don't know how they're going to treat this injury. They've implied that it's going to have an effect. What kind of effect and how severe an effect it's going to have, we don't know. But I would offer you this. If Braxton Miller had stayed healthy this entire season and gotten hurt in this game, nobody would have known who JT Barrett was. And if he would have entered this game, he potentially could have gone on and won the Big Ten Championship and won the National Championship for all I know. But the thing is, we don't know. 
And so how do you judge that as a committee? You're assuming so much. And that's the one thing with this new system that really makes me nervous is how they're going to react to this. Well, you had a lot of people that didn't like the BCS setup where you had two poles of computers. Well, now you've got 12 people making making a decision. And it's a little bit murky when it's mentioned that, hey, we're going to pick the four best teams. So what does that mean? Is Ohio State with Cardale Jones, if the Buckeyes win next week, one of the four best teams. Now, we still have Mississippi State Ole Miss, Alabama Auburn to play. Oregon's got a couple games left. Florida State Fulton. There's a lot can happen. They can move up in the standings by virtue of their teams losing. Another sack for Bosa. The helmet of Gardner comes off again. This time, no foul on Bosa. Well, I mean, what it really comes down to is the best versus most deserving. And, and that's, the, that's the important distinction. And if, you, and if Ohio State wins out, you can make a very good argument that they are one of the most deserving teams, one of the top four teams in that category to be in that playoff. The problem is the initiative for the committee is best, not most deserving. Gardner, they're going to call a timeout so that he can stay in the game. He lost his helmet, which means you have to come out unless you call a timeout. So Michigan will burn a timeout, one remaining. Well, we talked about Florida State with the ACC championship next week. How about coming up here shortly, taking on a, a, a pesky Gator team, Will Muschamp's uh, final game for Florida in the regular season, ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. That's the great thing about this new playoff system. I mean, all these games always matter. They matter even more here in rivalry weekend. Let's bring Tom in down to the field. You know, guys, we, we talk about injuries and how it affects the committee, and, and it's really almost centrally located on the quarterback position. Because I don't know if the thoughts is applied as much if it's not a quarterback. So the quarterback is the key there. But what we also don't know is we don't know what's going to unfold at the end of today and throughout next week, where even without JT Barrett, if he's not available, there could be some other things happening in college football where it doesn't end up mattering. And that's why the end of the season is so critical before people start to make final assessments. Yeah, I mean, again, if they went out and other teams lose in front of them, they'll be in the top four because of those teams falling. As Gardner throws, and it is caught by Funches for a first down. Or no, he's short of the first down, excuse me. At midfield. So it'll be third down here for the Wolverines inside three minutes to go down 21. Taking a lot of time here, but again, hard to imagine a, a comeback. Three scores down with two and a half to go. And what now likely is Brady Hook's uh, final game. Fourth year head coach of the Wolverines. We had a timeout call here by Ohio State with 219 remaining. <laughs> And started well for Brady Hoke in his Michigan tenure, won 11 games and, and beat Ohio State in 2011. Uh, but uh, three years later, a uh, decision uh, you would assume be made here soon, whether Hoke is back or whether Hoke is out. And what are your thoughts, Brian? You know, it's, it's a pivotal time for Michigan and the program. And uh, and I think you have an interim athletic director and Jim Hackett, who's going to make a decision probably next week. Uh, I, it's going to be very hard to keep Brady Hoke. I think, I think Brady Hoke realizes that. Um, this is not acceptable the way that this season has gone for Michigan, the way the past couple of seasons have gone. Uh, and so I wouldn't be surprised if, if he's let go next week. Um, and then, then you move forward and you say, okay, if Jim Hackett, who I fully anticipate is going to be the man that hires the next head coach potentially for Michigan, uh, is he the right guy to be in that position? And I think he is. And I actually talked with him this week, and I think he's uniquely qualified uh, to take this program in the position it is now, in the pivotal moment that it is now, uh, and take it to a new direction. And uh, he's a very intelligent man, uh, and, and he's a Michigan man through and through, understands, you know, his father was a captain for Ohio State in 1944. His brother played for Woody Hayes at Ohio State, and obviously Jim played for Bo Schembechler at Michigan. Uh, so he understands this, this program, he understands this rivalry in particular, and, uh, and I know that he is dedicated 100% to getting this program back on track. Fourth down and two. Michigan has to go for it. Down three scores with 214 left. And Gardner will take off. And Gardner gets the first down. Now you mentioned that you know Hackett could stay on. Right now he's the interim. When you go to hire a head coach, uh, how does that impact your search if a head coach 
is uncertain about the athletic director position. Yeah, and I, and I think I think Jim will handle that well. Uh, I, he may decide that he wants to be the athletic director. I think he, he tried this on, and uh, and it's sometimes you fall in love with a position, and uh, you come. He's come to the the rescue of this program in, in a very dire situation with Dave Brand, the resignation. Uh, I mean, how many how many negative things have happened for Michigan this season? And uh, and I think you need somebody that is able to manage all of those things, both with the coaching staff, the on the field product, the off the field product, what's going on in the university. There's a lot going on. And uh, I think Jim Hackett has the skill set to manage all that and, and take it in the right direction. Darbo gets the first down. And Brady Hoke at a press conference this week, he, he got the sense he knew, he, he joked that I'm sure we'll have another press conference here soon to discuss my future. And in talking with him yesterday, he's very calm, and uh, Brady's always been good to, to talk to, and uh, he, he just wanted a, a chance to win this game. This is uh, you know, the game that he's looked to, you know, when Rich Rodriguez was the coach here uh, with Michigan. Uh, there wasn't the same emphasis. He was uh, unfamiliar with the rivalry. He knew about it, but didn't have uh, as deep roots as Brady Hoke did. Brady Hoke's a great man, great person, and uh, and he's a good football coach. Gardner's pass overthrown. There's a flag down. Funches the intended receiver. But at the end of the day, we know this is a production business and it's a performance business, and and he knows that. And there's no surprises coming for Brady Hoke. Holy defense number 13, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. You know, you, it's really three things that stand out. I think, number one, never having continuity and efficiency at the quarterback position over a consistent period of time. Three different offensive philosophies over the course of the last four years of his tenure. And an offensive line that has not developed when you consider the 2011, 2012 recruiting classes that were very strong in that area that haven't come to fruition just yet. Gardner going to the end zone and another flag as Apple had his back turn. Freddie Canteen, the intended receiver. Pass interference. Defense number 13. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. And obviously, Apple had no idea the ball was thrown there with his hands all over the receiver, so an easy call. But perhaps the last game for Brady Hope, certainly the last game for, for Devin Gardner, the senior quarterback. And when they made the change uh, to go to more of a, of a two-back system, which we saw a couple of years ago uh, from the Rich Rod Rich, uh, Reed option system, thought really that was going to suit uh, Devin Gardner. As Gardner rolls out and throws... And a catch made for a touchdown by Canteen. Got the foot down. Great catch from Freddie Canteen. You have the foot down. Yeah, that left foot was down. They had high hopes for Freddie Canteen. Had a great spring coming into fall camp. They thought he was going to be a, a major contributor in this offense, but hasn't panned out that way. That's only his fifth catch of the season. But well, somebody Michigan. that uh, Michigan can can hopefully build on for the future. And what about player development? Now that's uh, obviously something that has lacked the last few years. We'll see if that changes in the future. Let's go back to the studio with a 14-point lead for Ohio State. All right, Dave. Harrison Butker from 53 yards away ties the game at 24. They send it into overtime. Yellow Jackets score a touchdown on their first overtime possession, but then Butker has his point after blocked. You're still leading 30 to 24 in overtime. What a game there. Should be a great game tonight in the Iron Bowl. Number one, Alabama taking on Auburn College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels, 745 Eastern on ESPN. Ohio State going to win its eighth straight game and get to 11 and one going into next week's Big Ten Championship in Indianapolis against the winner of the Wisconsin Minnesota game. But obviously the, the, the story right now is Cardell Jones being the quarterback for Ohio State. How will they do in that game and beyond? Well, you think about if, if let's just say Wisconsin beats Minnesota today and they, they end up playing Wisconsin in that game, the Big Ten Championship game, Urban Meyer is going to have his hands full with that defense for, for Wisconsin, statistically one of the best in all the college football and Dave Aranda, their, off, their defensive coordinator. 
will have something cooked up if Cardell Jones is the quarterback. And we're going to have a timeout here. Ohio State was looking to see how Michigan was setting up for the onside kick. Ohio State has not played Wisconsin this year. As mentioned, they beat Minnesota two weeks ago. Here's the injury to, to JT Barrett. It was earlier in the fourth quarter where this team up seven. You saw the right leg get bent back. And the air cast on. He was carted off. Encouraged by his teammates. And again, how about the freshman Barrett? You've had this great year, Heisman type season, devastating injury. Yeah, you're still smiling and telling your team teammates, hey, go win the game. Uh, he he and he was uncanny in how calm he was after suffering that injury. He kind of he he looked down at his foot and then laid back and said, I don't want to look. And and the medical personnel came out and he immediately went to talking to his teammates. And, and that just goes to show you it, the way that he played in this game, Dave. I mean, this is the biggest game in, in, in the state of Ohio every single year, this game against Michigan. And everybody thought he might be nervous coming in this game, his first in the rivalry. But he had ice water in his veins the entire game and, and executed this offense. And, and it's no surprise that his teammates love him unconditionally. Here's the onside kick by Michigan. And an easy recovery for Evan Spencer of Ohio State. Only one more timeout for Michigan. And Urban Meyer knows it. Going to be a, another undefeated regular season in conference play, third straight year. In Minnesota, back in the 30s, had three straight years where they were unbeaten, but they also had a tie in there. And then Ohio State. Going back to uh, 2011, the Michigan game, not lost a conference game in the regular season. Urban Meyer will be 35 and three. The losses, Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship game last year, the bowl game against Clemson, Virginia Tech at home, which seems like four years ago. A much different Ohio State team since then. But how will they change with a different quarterback going forward? Jones takes a knee, he'll have to do it twice more because Michigan burns a timeout here. Fans don't like that. Well, and you and we knew there was it was going to be a battle for Ohio State to get that fourth spot against the Mississippi State or against the Baylor if they take care of Kansas State and win the de facto Big 12 championship, right? And, and Ohio State's hurdles was the Virginia Tech game, and their best win was Michigan State, Minnesota. And now you look at when you, the compounding factor of not having your quarterback, uh, this thing is far from over as to who gets that full spot in this college football playoff. Senior day here for the Buckeyes. And they will knock off Michigan for the 10th time in the last 11 years. Sophomore Cardale Jones comes in after the injury to Barrett. And the big play on fourth down and one, Ezekiel Elliott with a touchdown run and then a defensive touchdown on a fumble recovery by Darren Lee to put Michigan away. Well, you're going to hear a lot more of the name of Cardale Jones throughout the rest of this college football season. He now has only attempted 17 passes on the year. We're going to find out if he has what it takes. Jones takes an E and that's it. Michigan season is over. Ohio State keeps its playoff hopes alive with win number 11. And a great respect for Brady Hope. Urban Meyer taking the time to Meet with Hope there at midfield. Very physical game as we expected today between these two teams, these two great rivals. Too many explosive plays in the end for the Buckeyes as they win at 42-28. And now Ohio State will go watch Minnesota-Wisconsin to see who the Buckeyes will play in the Big Ten Championship game next week. That game is in Madison starting just about now. Let's check in. Meanwhile, with Tom standing by with Coach Meyer. Coach, you had fourth and short. Could have, could have punted it, played field position. You got the guts to make the call. Put the ball game in the hands of your players. Yeah, I, uh, I looked. I really trust our line coach. And I looked him in the eye, and he's got a very good unit. That unit, uh, if you can't get that first down in that situation, you're on a championship team, or we're a championship team. I know you don't know the status yet of J.T. Barrett. Stadium went silent, and your defense won this game for you after that injury. What does that say about this kid? Oh, he's a uh, he's a tremendous leader, and uh, I gotta go find out. But uh, uh, we got we got a championship game next week. Can't enjoy this very much longer, uh, very long. But 
Uh, JT's a warrior. I love that guy. Congratulations. Go check out. Thanks. Right. Final score, 42-28. As Ohio State knocks off Michigan. Coming up next on ABC, more college football presented by K Jewelers. For Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville, our outstanding ABC crew. I'm Dave Pash. So long from Columbus. Ohio State, win number 11, beats Michigan 42-28.